Hello and welcome to this react.js project series where we are going to create this project from scratch. So let me give you a more in-depth tour of what we are going to be building. So this is the project that we are going to be building. So if I refresh, you will see all the images animates in a spiral fashion. So let me refresh again for you. So as you can see one image comes after another. Same with this list, they also come one after another. After that we have this quote section, then we have this top shapes section. And then we have this footer and of course if this is completely responsive so if i make it smaller as you can see if i make it smaller now they are in two columns to fit in smaller devices and then this list have also become inline elements and then the the shapes card as you can see now they have become a card and now they have this box shadow if i expand as you can see now they don't have any box shadow but if i now scale down the page and now they have this box shadow and now our footer have also become two row one is spanning the entire width and the second two are 50% and 50% of the entire width okay let me expand back and you will also notice that we have this hamburger icon we have made this from scratch using div and if i now click on this as you can see we get this sidebar this also becomes a cross or a close icon we'll also be handling that in css and as you can see right now we are in home page so this home home link is highlighted if i now expand this home here is also highlighted if i now go to recipes page as you can see we again have some animations then we have this search bar and then we have this recipe cards so this this page is also responsive of course so if i now scale down my page they are now one column layout and nothing breaks now the most exciting part is the settings page so if i now go to the settings as you can see you will be able to set the theme so we can we can have light theme or if we want we can have dark theme like so so now our page will be completely dark like this let me refresh back and now we can also change the theme color so for example i can change back to the green and now everything is now with this green color if i want i can make this dark and green like so and now our page is dark themed and we have this green color as our primary color and of course everything else works the same and we can also make our font size smaller like so we can make it medium which is default and we can make it larger like so and if we want we can make our animation speed slow for example so let me scale down my window so if i keep the animation speed slow and click on this as you can see it comes slowly if i make it medium it's a bit faster if i make it fast now everything is fast. So to build this, we're going to be using React, we're going to be using SAS, and we are going to be using the newly released React Router DOM v6. So we use SAS, so in that way, we'll be able to organize our files just like we organized our JS file in small pieces like so. And don't worry if you don't know that much of SAS, I'll guide you step by step. You just need a really basic understanding of React to follow along with this video. So I hope you're as excited as I am. So make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you'll be notified when I release the next video of this series and I'll see you next time. In this video let's set up our project. So we want to create a new react app and install all the dependencies that we'll need. So I'm going to open a new terminal by clicking terminal new terminal and here we are going to start installing our new react project by typing npx then create react app and the name of our app can be let's say food app and hit enter and it will start generating a new react project for you so let's wait for the installation to finish so now our project have been installed so if i open up my sidebar as you can see we have this food app folder and inside that we have a basic react project so let's cd into that project so we're going to say cd into food app like so and after that we also want routing in our project so we're going to say npm install i for install and we want to install react router dom so react dash router dash dom and hit enter and again wait for the installation to finish and the react router has also been installed now we also want to use sas in our project so we're going to say again npm install and we want to install sas hit enter and wait for the installation to finish and now sas has also been installed and finally we want font awesome for our icons so let's go to font awesome so you, we are going to go to font awesome's react page and here you'll see the getting started installation guide so we have to install the font awesome svg core the solid icons and the react font awesome so let me just copy this Control c and we can paste it like so and wait for the installation to finish 
okay so we have installed the font awesome svg core we have installed the free solid svg icons and react font awesome but we also need the brand icon so let me just copy this one more time so Control c paste it here and instead of solid svg icons we want brand svg icons so we are simply going to replace it with free brands svg icons hit enter and this will install the brand icons so the brand icons are the facebook twitter instagram those type of icons the big brand icons so let's wait for the installation to finish and the installation is finished so this should be all of our dependency for this project so let's start our server by typing npm start and here is our newly created react app so let's simplify it so in the source folder we have a lot of files so let's delete all the files that we don't need okay so i have deleted all the files except for app.js index.css and index.js actually i am also going to delete the index.css so delete since we are going to be using sas so now we only have two files index.js and app.js so now in the index.js we don't need the report web vital we have deleted it we don't need the index.css we don't need these lines as well save and then we can go to our app.js and here we can also just return a simple paragraph so let's say hello world and we don't need the logo.svg or app.css save so this is how this looks like we simply have a hello world text and let's see if says works perfectly or not so in the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called styles and in the styles folder we, we are going to have a new sas file called let's say index.sas so we are going to use index.scss like so so now we have the styles folder inside that we have index.scss so inside that let's target everything and let's say margin 0 so margin equals to 0 and we can also say padding padding will also be 0 and we are also going to say box sizing so box dash sizing to border box like so and now in our index.js let's try to import the sas file so we're going to say import and we're going to import dot forward slash styles and then index.scss so index.scss like so save and click on refresh so as you can see now the white space is gone so our sas is also working so this should be all for our setup and in the next video we are going to create the navbar so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss the video and you can like this video if you want that way youtube will suggest this video to more audience and that will help me a lot and i'll see you next time okay so in the previous video we have set up our project and in this video let's start building our project by creating the navbar so in the source folder i'm going to create a new folder called components inside that i'm going to create a file called navbar.js so like so we have this components folder inside that we have this navbar folder so let's create a basic component here so we're going to say export default function and the name of our function will be navbar and it have to return some html so return for now let's just return a paragraph element and let's say navbar like so and in the app component we are going to import our navbar so we're going to say import and we are going to import navbar from components slash navbar and let's use that navbar in our return here so we're going to use navbar like so save and it says navbar okay so our component is working so here we're going to use a div instead so we're going to say div and the div will have a class name of navbar so we're going to say navbar let's copy the class and go to our index.scss so here we're going to say target our navbar and let's say this will have a height of 55 pixels so 55 pixel and just so that we can see it let's give it a background color of red for now so background color of red this is how much height it will take okay we, we don't want a background color instead we want a box shadow but for the color of our box shadow we don't want to use a fixed color here 
that is because we know our app will have multiple themes and multiple primary colors so same color or box shadow may not look good in all cases so for all the colors and other variables we are going to create some css variables so let me paste them here so here i have created some variables so you can go through them so we are first selecting our root and here we are creating a background color variable and setting that to white and then we are also creating a variable called background light which will be a little lighter than our main background color but in case of white theme both of them are going to be same but in case of dark theme when we create our dark theme the background color will be dark and the background light will be a little bit lighter and this is the box shadow color and this is our primary color this is the pinkish color and then for the white theme our text color is this dark color and the text light will also be a little bit lighter than the original text color like so and the font size we are setting this to 16 pixel and we are also setting the animation speed to 1 this animation speed will control how how fast or how slow our animation should run okay so now first let's target our body and here we are simply going to say font size and font size will be simply our font size variable so we are going to say var inside that we are going to say font size like so ok so now we can see our navbar so let's say our navbar will have some box shadow so we are going to say box the shadow and let's say the x axis will be 0 pixel and the y can be let's say 3 pixel and the blur will be let's say 6 pixel and the color will be our shadow color and we are also going to say our background color will be the background color and the color will be text color so dash color equals to dash dash text color like so save it and here now we can see this box shadow okay let's add some items to our navbar so here first we are going to create a a tag so a and for now the href will be hashtag later on we'll be replacing all the a tags with a router link so for now let's just say hashtag exclamation mark and here we are going to say food is hub And I am also going to wrap this O's in a span so we can style them separately. So let's say span. And we are going to close it here. Like so. So this is how this looks like. So after that we are going to have some router links. So we are going to create an, another div with a class of let's say nav links. Like so. Let's close it. So inside that we are again can have some a text. So we are going to have a about page. We're going to have a home. Actually, we don't need about. Another one is recipes. And another one is settings. Save. And this is how they looks like. So let's style them, make them prettier. So let's say our navbar will have a display of flex. So we're going to say display flex. We're going to say justify content to space between and align items to center save it and this is how they looks like we also want some space on the left and right side but for that we're going to give our navbar another class the class will be container and let's create that class so let's say dot container for now let's just say this will have a padding let's say padding block so let's say padding block Let's say 20 viewport width. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it should be padding inline. Sorry, not padding block. So padding inline. So padding block is the top and bo bottom, and padding inline is left and right. Save. So now we have this much padding on the left and right. Let's change it to let's say 15. So later on we'll be adding media queries to make it responsive. So the padding will be good in all screen sizes. But for now, 15 viewport width should be good enough. And let's say we also want to use some Google fonts. So let's say fonts.google.com. So fonts.google.com. And let's say we want to use Roboto. So I'm going to select Roboto. Let me expand my window. So we're selecting the 100. So you can just click to select or deselect. I have selected the thin 100. I've selected the light 300. I have selected the 400, the 500 and 700 and 900 also so you can select them after that you'll see the generated code so all you have to do is copy this link so control c and then in our project let me open up my sidebar by typing control b inside that in the public folder we have this index.html 
and here we have to paste them so let's say we are going to paste them here and we can fix the indentation like so save them that's all and then in the css we simply have to specify a font family so here we already have this example let's copy this let's go to our index.scss in the body we are going to say body will have a font family of roboto and as backup we are saying sans serif so if roboto for some reason is not available sans serif will be applied save and now our font family has been changed to roboto okay okay let's keep this one a class so let's go to our let me close this and let's go to our navbar and this one let's give it a class name so class name of let's say logo like so copy this control c control s here since we are using sas we can say dot and then the logo inside that since we are using sas we can nest it okay so for this one let's say the font size so font dash size font size will be let's say 1.2 em since we said 1.2 em we are using the em unit here in that way in javascript if you were to change our font size so let's say 20 pixel as you can see this also becomes bigger if we make it 10 this also becomes smaller so by changing the font size variable we'll be able to change all the font size of our page if we use em okay let's also say the font weight will be bold let's see how that looks Oh, let's say bolder now let's ch change the color to our primary color save we're going to say the text decoration to none to remove the underline so text decoration will be none actually not just here i'm going to cut this out so control x and let's target a text separately so a and we're going to say text decoration to none so none of our a text should have any underline so and actually let's make it 1.5 em and let's target the span inside the logo so if you remember we have wrapped our o's inside span so we can target those span and for those let's say the color will be text color so text dash color and now these o's are black which is our text color okay let's also add a little bit of text shadow so we're going to say text dash shadow let's say zero pixel from the x-axis one pixel from the y-axis three pixel for the blur and the color will be our shadow color let me close the sidebar save so we have just a little bit of shadow and now let's see let me be, bring it here so in the navbar we have this nav links let's target them so our nav links let's target the a inside them so let's say they will have some margin on the left so margin left of let's say 1 em and yeah 1 em should be good enough let's say they will have a color of text light so color equals to text dash light save this is how they looks like let's also say the letter spacing so letter spacing let's say one pixel save it let me close this one and i'm also going to say they will have a text transform of uppercase so text transform uppercase okay now in our original project if i go back as you can see when you hover on them we have this pink underline let's see how we can make that so for that we're going to use the before element so we're going to say and colon colon before so if i say and and will basically target this this one the parent and then we're going to say colon colon before which is same as saying a colon colon before and here let's say content equal be nothing so content equals to an empty string this will have a display of block so display of block let's give it a height of let's say 10 pixel the width will be 100 percent so width equals to 100 percent and background color will be our primary color so background color equals to primary color save it and this is how they looks like so this is not what we want so let's say our ace will have a position of relative so position relative save okay let's make it inline block that would be more convenient so inline dash block like so okay now let's also say they will have a position of absolute so position of absolute and the top and the bottom will be negative 10 pixel and left will be zero save and this is how they looks like okay let's change the width height let's say five pixel and make this five negative five as well actually let's make it three i think three would be better so three pixel for the height and yeah three pixels should be pretty close to what we have 
and I think we also have a letter spacing of 2 pixel so let's make it 2 like so and by default they will have a transform so transform of scale x to 0 so we won't be able to see them but we are also going to say and colon hover so and colon hover colon colon before when we hover on them then the before element should have a transform of scale to 1 and now when we hover on them we get this underline let's also say our a tag they will have some transition so we're going to say transition to transform and then for the transform duration instead of simply saying 0 0.5 second we're going to use the calc function so we're going to say calc and then we're going to say var dash dash animation speed time 0.5 seconds so animation speed is currently 1 so 0 0.5 times 1 is still 0 0.5 so our animation speed will be 0 0.5 save it and now if you hover as you can see they, they animates okay let's make it let's say 0 0.3 actually let's try 0 0.2 and yeah 0 0.2 should be good enough but now if our animation speed was some bigger number let's say 3 now they takes more time and if our animation speed was let's say some smaller number like 0.1 and now the animation occurs faster so this is the benefit of using variables here by changing the variable we can change the behavior of our page okay so we're also going to have a active so we are going to say n dot active so when they have a when our a tags have a class of active the color will be the primary color so color equals to primary color like so so now in our navbar if for example one of our a tags have a class list of active so class name of active the color of them will be the primary color and let's say they will also have a font weight of bold so we are going to say font weight of bold save like so so the active class will be later on added using the javascript or in react by looking at our page router link so if we are in home page the home will have a class list of active if we were in the recipe space this will have a class list of active but for now let's remove them and yeah this should be all for this this tutorial in the next video what we are going to do is if i now make the, our screen smaller as you can see we get this hamburger icon and if we click on it it becomes a cross or a x this is what we are going to be building in our next video we are going to be making from scratch we won't be using any icons or svg it will be made using just three divs so i hope you are excited for that one so subscribe and leave a like and i'll see you next time in this video let's make the hamburger icon for our sidebar so i'm going to create a div so div and this one will have a class name so let's say class name of sidebar icon so let's say sidebar dash icon or let's say sidebar button and for now let's just say hello like so so here it is our sidebar button our sidebar button div so let's style it so let's target it control c go to our index.scss so our sidebar button is inside our navbar so we can paste it here and let's say this will have a height of let's say 25 pixel and the width width can be let's say 28 pixel and just so that we can see it let's give it a background color so background color of let's say red so this is how much height and width we have let's see in our finished project let me make it smaller so this is a bit bigger so let's make change the height and width so let's say the height can be let's say 35 pixel and let's see um let's say 32 pixel and yeah 32 pixel looks pretty similar let's change the width also let's say the width can also be let's say 30 pixel 35 pixel maybe and yeah this should be good enough for now but now here instead of saying hello we're going to create some div with a class of bar so div and the class name will be bar let me copy this two more time so each of this bar will represent one of these one of these bars now let's style them in our css so let's go to our index.css in the sidebar button we'll have some bars so dot bar let's say they will have a height of let's try let's say 8 pixel 
the width will be 100% like so and the background color will be our text color and we're going to say dash dash text dash color like so so here they are let's say our sidebar will have a display of flex so display actually we don't need display flex they will have a position of absolute so we're going to say bars will have a position let me close the semicolon here and let's say they'll have a position of absolute so absolute like so to make this absolute position we need to make it position of relative otherwise it will cause some issues okay so now let's target our first child so and colon nth child and we want to target our first child and this will have a top of zero let's choose our second child and let's say this will have a top of let's say 50 percent so 50 percent from the top and then we're also going to say transform to translate y to negative 50 percent and then let's target our third bar so n child 3 and this one the top will be let's say 100 percent and then we're going to say transform to translate y so translate y to ne negative 100 percent save it and now these bars are as you can see spread it across the entire height okay let me remove this red background color we don't need it let's see how this looks okay this is way too thick let's make it six pixel let's see yeah six pixels should be good enough let's change it to let's say 30 let's make it 28 and yeah 28 looks good so let me make expand this okay Let's, they will also have some border radius so let's say border radius let's say 5 pixel and now this is how they look and if you want you can leave it like this but I decided to make some bigger than others so as you can see this one is a bit smaller and this one is a bit bigger so let's do that so we're going to say our second child will have also have a scale so we're going to say scale actually it will be just scale scale x and let's say 0.8 so this is a bit smaller so let's also say transform origin so transform and the origin will be let's say right and this is how this looks like let me also do the same for the our for our third one so let's say transform origin right and we're also going to say scale x so scale x this time let's make it 1.2 save it and this is how this looks like let's make it 1.1 and this is how this looks like now let's change the width i also want to make it let's say 30 pixel and yeah 30 pixel maybe is much more similar to what we had Yeah, 30 pixels should be good enough and then what we want to do is when this has a class list of active I want to make it across like so let's see how we can do that so for now let's just statically say our sidebar will have a, also have a class list of active later on we'll be adding it using JavaScript in react so let's say and dot active so when our sidebar has a class list of active okay first of all we are going to say our bar all of the bar will have a transform origin so transform origin will be center and they'll also have a top of let's say 50 percent so 50 percent like so and then let's target our first bar so we're going to say ant colon nth child we want to target our first child and this will have a transform of rotate to 45 degree and the translate y will be negative 50 percent save it and now this has rotated like this so let's copy this so we're going to say all shape down let's target our third child and this one will be rotated in negative 45 degree like so save like so and let's target our let's say second child so we're going to say and colon in child second and for this one we're going to say scale x so scale x and the scale x will be zero so we won't be able to see it save it 
and this is how this looks like and this tool should have a scale of one so let's do that so let's say scale of one and instead of translate y we are going to say translate and let's say zero for the x and 50 percent for the y so zero and 50 like so okay the translate should be before the rotate so let's cut this so control x and paste it here control v let's do the same for this one control x and control v save and click on refresh and this is how they look like and now we also want to add some transition to our bars so we're going to say transition and we're going to say transition will be transform And now instead of using this calc function and then var animation speed and then that duration every time let's create a sas function for that so we're going to save and you can go to this page for more details about sas function i'll leave the link to this page in the description you can check it from there so basically we have to say at function and then name our function so we're going to say at function and let's name it let's say get animation duration and this will take duration as its argument so we're going to say dollar sign duration like so and then we're going to say return at return and we're going to say calc and here we're going to say duration times dash bar dash dash animation speed like so save it and so let's see where we used our transition so we use a transition here so instead of this we can use our function so our function is called get animation duration and we can simply pass 0.2 second like so save it let's refresh this and as you can see this works the same so let's copy this control c and we can use this function in our transition for our bars as well so here we're going to say our bar will have a transform and the duration will be Let's say 0.5 second save okay now we can't see the animation that is because the state is fixed so in our nav bar let's say this will not have a class of active by default and here let's import our use effect so we're going to actually use state so we're going to say import use state from react like so and here we are going to have a state we are going to say const show sidebar show sidebar and set show sidebar by default it will be false and here instead of simply saying the class name will be sidebar let's cut it and use a data binding so here we are going to say if our show sidebar show sidebar equals to true in that case it will have a class list of sidebar and active otherwise it will have a class list of just show sidebar save like so so if it was let's say true now we get this cross icon let's make it false again and here we can add a click event listener so we're going to say on click and here we're going to say set show sidebar and here we can simply say exclamation mark show sidebar save let's see if we have any error it looks like we don't so if we click on this as you can see this becomes cross and then again becomes the original bars if we cl keep clicking on them so this is also working we don't want this this to be visible by default this should be visible only in smaller screen let's see how we can do that so in our index.css let's go to here let's say our button by default this will have a display of none so we're going to say display of none so now we can see it and now we want to use a media query so here we're going to say at media screen and max width will be let's say 768 pixel in that case let me delete all of them so in that case our nav links will have a display of none and our sidebar button will have a display of block so save it 
So now it looks the same, but if we now were to go in a smaller screen, as you can see, now we get the button. So this is also working. And I think we should stop here and in the next video, we're going to create our sidebar. So let me make it smaller. So if we click on this, we should get this sidebar and all this and all this icon should pop up one after another. So I'll see you in the next video. In the previous videos, we have created this nav bar and we also made this hamburger icon. And in this video, let's create our sidebar. So I'm going to create a new component, so new file and I'm going to call it sidebar.js. Here we have to say export default function and it will be sidebar. And for now let's just return a simple text, so we're going to say return and we can return something like a paragraph text and that will say I am sidebar I'm going to import it in our navbar here I'm going to say import and we're going to import sidebar from dot forward slash sidebar since we are already in our components folder and now here I want to say sidebar but if we do this, this will give us an error. As you can see, it already covered in red lines. That is because a component should only return one parent element, but here we're returning two. So what we're going to do is wrap them inside an empty React fragment. So I'm going to cut this. And the empty React frag fragment is just a set of angle brackets like so. So let me paste it, control V and fix the indentation. And refresh and here we have our sidebar okay now let's style our sidebar actually first go here and let's give it a class of sidebar we're going to say div and class name is called to sidebar close it forward slash div and you can say sidebar here okay let's copy the class control c and go to our index.scss and here let's paste it and let's say this will have a position of fixed so position of fixed the top will be 0, the left will be 0, height will be 100 viewport height and the width let's say 200 pixel. let's see how that much looks. Save, ok also let's give it a background color just so that we can see it. So we're going to say for now let's just say red. So this is how much it spans across the width, let's see how much our finished project width is, let's see. So about this much and here we have this much okay we have to make it a little bit larger or wider save and yeah now they are in same width okay so we don't want this red background color instead we want our background color to be our background color so we're going to say var dash dash background dash color and after that we have we want to create this dark overlay so we can easily do this by using a box shadow so we're going to say box shadow the x will be 0, the y will be 0, the blur will also be 0 and just the spread, the spread can be let's say 1000 pixel so 1000 pixel and the color will be RGBA000 and the opacity will be 0.2 so 20% transparent black color save and this is how this looks like this should be good enough let's also add some box shadow ok we already added a box shadow let's add another layer of box shadow so for this one and for this one let's say the x-axis will be 3 pixel, the y-axis will be 0 and the blur will be let's say 5 pixel and the color will be shadow color so var dash dash shadow color save and now we have this bit of shadow also ok this should be good enough now we want to have some link here instead of the sidebar text we want the links to be same as this navbar links here so we don't want to repeat ourselves so what I'm going to do is cut this out so actually let's comment it out for now so control forward slash to comment and I'm going to create an array of our links so we're going to say const links equals to it will be an array of objects so array and the first one we can say title or the name name will be home and the link will be forward slash let's create another one okay for this one the name will be recipes and the path will be let's say forward slash recipes and finally we'll have our settings page so we're going to say name equals to settings and the path will be forward slash settings like so so now instead of just having this a tag let's loop through our link 
so we're going to say links dot map where we're going to get our link let's close it like so so for now let's just return a a tag so we're going to say a the href will be for now let's just use hashtag when we start using react router we'll be replacing the a tags with link tag but for now let's just say exclamation hashtag exclamation mark like so the key will be link dot name and the for the content we are saying link dot name also save and now we again got the same links actually i want to make them a little bit smaller let's see how we can do that so you know index dot scss let's go to our let's go to our navbar and here is our a text so let's say font size let's say 0.9 em like so so now they are a little bit smaller okay so now what we're going to do is pass those links to our sidebar so we're going to say links equals to links so link is the property and the value is the link that we have created these links so now we can receive those links in our sidebar so here let's say links as our props like so so again we're going to use the loop so we're going to say links dot map will get link Here I'm going to return a a tag again and the href again for now let's just say hashtag like so and again we're getting the link dot names here save. So now we have this home recipes and settings but in our finished project they look like this. So you'll notice that they also have this icon let's see how we can add these icons. So in our navbar we'll also import icons so for icons if you remember we have installed font awesome in our setup part so let's import icons from front awesome so we're going to say import and we're going to import let's say fa home so font awesome home icon we want fa list so font awesome list and we also want fa cog so fa cog cog is basically the settings icon from at font awesome forward slash free solid I SVG icons like so so here they will also have a icons property so we're going to say icon equals to fa dash home and this one will have fa list and finally this one this one will have this cog icon so fa cog save so right now we are not using this icons yet so we can't see any icon but in our sidebar component we're going to use those icons so to use them we have to import font awesome here so we're going to say import and we're going to import font awesome icons so font awesome icons from add for add font awesome for slash react font awesome like so and let me make this multi line now so let me control x this enter paste it control v and to use the icon we simply have to say font awesome and for our icon we have to say link dot icon save and as you can see now we have the, our icons okay now let's style them in our css before that let's give them a class so we're going to say class name and the class name will be let's say sidebar link like so let me copy the class control c go to index.scss and paste it inside our sidebar here control v and let's say they will have a display of blocks so we're going to say display So now they are in separate lines. Let's also give them some padding. So we're going to say padding. So let's try 1 em and 1 em. Maybe it is good, or maybe bad. We can see it yet. So let's say border left. So border dash left. The border left will be let's say 0.5 em. And the color will be solid primary color. Like so, save. And this is how they look. We also need some margin on the bottom. So we're going to say margin bottom of let's say 1 em. And yeah, the padding on left and right is okay. But for the top and bottom, let's say 0.5 em. Like so. And let's make it let's say 0.3 em. And 0.3 em is a bit too small. So let's say 0.4 em. And 0.4 is pretty good. Okay, so by default the color will be a transparent. So we're going to say transparent border color. And when they have a class list of active, so we're going to say end active. So when they have a class of active, the border left color will be our primary color. 
like so so let's go to our sidebar and try it so let's give it a class of active as you can see now they have this color okay let's remove it and these icons are basically svg so let's target them so in our scss here let's target our svg let's say they will have a width of let's say 1 em or let's say 1.2 em and 1.2 should be good enough let's also add some margin on the left side so margin left of let's say 0.5 em actually it should be margin right save and now they have this little bit of margin okay let's give give it a color so let's say color equal to bar that's just text color like so okay let me refresh and here now we have this color let's try to give it a font weight of bold let's see how that looks so let's say font dash weight of bold and we didn't have bold in our or original project so let's remove it and instead let's say font size and let's try 1.1 em and yeah this is much more closer to what we have in our finished project so when we hover on them we also get this border color so let's do that so we're going to say and colon hover and the border color border left color will also be this primary color so let's copy this Control c Control v so when we hover on them we also get this color and we also had a background color so we're going to say background color of this time it will be rgba 000 and for the opacity let's say 0 0.05 save okay it should be just 0 0.05 save and we have this little bit of transparent background also and yeah this should be good enough but now what we're going to do is make it hidden initially so we're going to say we're going to go to our nav bar and since our nav bar and sidebar is the same is in the same component and we have this show sidebar state here so we can use it control c so what we're going to do is say if show sidebar state is true in that case show the sidebar and we can cut this save so initially we don't have our sidebar and in the and when we're clicking this hamburger icon we're setting the set show bar to opposite of what it was previously but for now we can just say true if we save it let's try to shrink our window now we have this hamburger icon and if we click on it we get our sidebar and if we click anywhere we want to close our sidebar let's see how we can do that so we are going to pass this show sidebar as our prop so we are going to say close actually let's create a function for that that will be better so let's create a function let's create a that function here so we are going to say function let's call it close sidebar and it will simply set the set show sidebar to false like so save and here we can pass it as a fun prop called close so we are going to say close equals to it will be our close sidebar like so so now let's use it in our sidebar component so in our sidebar we are going to receive close as a prop and we are going to say when it is clicked so we are going to say on click we are going to simply run the close function so close save it click on refresh let's click on this the sidebar opens if you click on here the sidebar goes away okay so this is what we want it doesn't matter which link we click the sidebar will close but since we use box shadow and not an actual HTML element if you click here the sidebar won't close you have to click on this white part like so we also want some animation so this should slide from the left side so let's see how we can do that so our sidebar will simply have an animation so we're going to say animation and for the animation let's say the duration will be again we're going to use our function so we're going to say get animation duration let's say 0.5 second and the name of our function can be let's say slide in left okay so for our animations I want to create a separate CSS file so what I'm going to do is create a new folder so new folder I'm going to call it partials and inside that we're going to have a new file so new file I'm going to call it underscore animations dot scss so all our animations will be inside this function so we called it slide in left so co copy this control C and here we're going to say add keyframes and we called it slide in left 
let's say at 0% the transform is going to be translate x to negative 100% and at 100% the translate x will be 0 like so. So first we have to import these animations in our index.scss so to import it we simply have to say add import and we want to import partials for slash underscore animations or we can simply say animations.scss we don't need the underscore save and yeah this works the same but let's see let's refresh and click here and as you can see now the sidebar comes sliding in okay let's try to make the animation duration a bit slower a bit faster actually so and let's decrease the animation speed so here instead of saying 0.5 second let's say 0.3 second save click on refresh and as you can see this slides in in 0.3 second okay this should be good enough for now and in our finished project you'll also notice that these links also comes one after another so they will also have this animation so we're going to say animation actually let's just copy this Control c and Control v if we were to save it click on refresh actually this one refresh and click on it we can't see the animation that is because both this sidebar and this links have the same animation duration so they are occurring in the same time so for our links we are going to add some animation delay so we are going to say add for so in sas we can use for loop so we are going to say for dollar i so the i will be our variable and then we are looping from one to three that is because we have three links so as you can see we have three links home recipes and settings so we are going to say for nth child we are going to we are targeting our all the one two three child so all three of this link and we're going to say animation duration so animation actually animation delay so animation delay will be let's say okay to use it we're going to have to say hashtag and inside curly braces we can say dollar i times let's say 0.1 second save it okay we have some error let's see okay we again have to say hashtag and curly brace like so save it and now we don't have any error let's try to refresh and click here and they comes but they kind of jitters so we're going to say the transform equals to translate x equals to negative 100 percent by default so negative 100 percent save it click on refresh and now they comes one after another but they also goes away so we have to say animation fill modes to forward so we can simply say forwards save click on refresh click here and as you can see our links comes one after another so this is what we want it so okay guys that's all for our sidebar in the next video we'll start working on this section here so i'll see you in the next part Okay guys, in the previous video we have finished this sidebar and in this video we need to create this section here, this what are we about section here. So let's see how we can do that. So let's go to our app component. So app.js. Here we want to import a new component. So we are going to create a component for this section here. But before we do that in our app, what, what we are going to do is create a div here. So we are going to say div. And this div will have a class name of container. So class name. Of container if we now do this and have a text here for example hello save as you can see our navbar and the text have same amount of padding so our page will have consistent padding here so that is why we created the separate container class okay we also want some padding on top and the bottom so we're also going to give it another class of main and let's go to our index.scss okay so our index.scss has become very long so let's try to simplify it so what i'm going to do is cut all of this so Control x and then we're going to create a new folder new file in our partials folder so we're going to call it underscore navbar dot scss and paste it Control v save and we're simply going to import that navbar so we're going to say at import and we're going to import partials for slash navbar save it okay it looks like we have some error let's see what is that we need a semicolon here save and everything still works the same okay now let's target our main so we're going to say dot main let's give it a padding block so we're going to say padding dash block and let's say 
three viewport width like so actually this should be main i have spelled it wrong so it should be main save and now we have this little bit of padding on top and bottom yeah this should be good enough so now in our components i'm going to create a new component so new file let's call it hero section so this will be our hero section so let's create a new file we are going to call it hero section dot js and we're going to say export default function hero section and for now let's just return a div so we're going to say return we're going to return a div and we're going to say hero section and now let's import it in our app so let's say go to our app and we're going to say import and we're going to import hero section so hero section from components forward slash hero section and we can paste it here so hero section save go to our app and it says hero section all of our section will have a class list of section so let's go to here and let's give it a class name so class name of section and we want our section to be two columns so one for this one and one for this one so inside the section we're going to have column the class name will be column or just calls for short and this one let's just say call one for now so column one and for the second one let's give it a class name of column again and this will say column two so call two and close it save and this is how they looks like now so let's style them so let's target our section first and let's go here dot control v section and let's say they will have a this section will have a display of flex and they will also say align items to center so align items center like so okay let's select the call inside the section so dot call they will have a width of 50 percent so 50 percent save and now as you can see this is taking this much width and this is taking this much width so half of the available width okay let's see what is next and then we'll have this h1 and then this paragraph and then this button in first column so let's do that so let's go to our hero section so first we are going to have a h1 let's give it a class of title so class name equals to title and we can copy the text so what are we about control c control v and after the h1 text we are going to have a paragraph text with the class of info let's say class name the class name will be info and again we can copy this text control c control v paste it and finally we'll have a button so we're going to create a button class name will be button so class name equals to btn for button and this will say explore now save it and this is what they looks like so we need to style them let's start by styling our button so control c go to index.scss and let's paste it here let's say our button will have no border or outline so we're going to say border equals to none the outline will also be none okay let's give it a background color of our primary color so background color equals to var and we're going to say dash dash primary color the color will be white so we're going to say color equals to white hashtag fff for white save it it needs some padding so we're going to say padding the top bottom can be let's say 0.5 em and the left right will be 1 em save it and this is how this looks like let's also say the text transform will be uppercase and the font size will be let's say 1.2 em let's say font size 1.2 em and let's see actually 1.1 em should be good enough so 1.1 em let's see how this looks okay let's also try making 8.5 all direction save actually let's make it 0.75 em and yeah this should be good enough let's also say the letter spacing so letter spacing equals to let's say one pixel we do need some border radius so we're going to say border radius 
of let's say 3 pixel and we'll have some box shadow so we're going to say box dash shadow the x axis will be 0 the y will be 3 pixel the blur will be 6 pixel and the color will be our shadow color save we have this shadow color okay let's make it 1 or 2 and this is how this looks and we're going to say and colon hover so when we hover on them hover on our button the box shadow will be one pixel from the y and the blur will be let's say just three pixels save it so when we hover on them we can barely see our shadow okay let's try make it one pixel and font weight bold so font weight bold save and yeah i think this looks better let's see yeah this looks better but we have to increase our padding now so let's say 0.75 here and this one can be 1 em yeah this is pretty close to what we had in our finished project not exactly but should be good enough okay now let's target our section let's get the title so dot title the title will have a color of text color so color equals to var dash dash text color font size will be let's say 3 em so this is how this looks like pretty close to what we have let's say they will also have some margin on the bottom so we are going to say margin bottom let's try 0.5 em and let's see 0.5 em is too much let's say 0.25 em and 0.25 em should be good enough so let's target our info dot info so info will have a color of text dash light the font size will be 1 em let's make it 1 em like so it will have some letter spacing so we're going to say letter spacing of let's say one pixel again and it will have a line height so we're going to say line height let's try 1.2 let's see how that looks i think 1.3 and yeah 1.3 should be good enough let's also say it will have some margin on the bottom as well of margin bottom of let's say 1 em instead so 1 em or 1.25 em so now we have about same amount of white space on top and bottom okay so now we want to create this gallery so for that we need some images so what i'm going to do is copy the images from our finished project so he, this is the image folder and i'm going to paste it in the public folder so now we have this image folder in the image folder we have this gallery folder inside that we have these images and then we have this top shape section where we have these images and i'll leave the link to the finished project in the video description so you will be able to simply get this image folder from that and paste it in your public folder okay and for our images as you can see the images are in a fixed ratio for that we're going to create a separate component just for our image so let's create a new component so new file and we're going to call it let's say let's call it custom image js like so so let's say export default and here we are going to call it function custom image and this will take a source we don't need the alt this will simply take the source and it, this will take the padding top so let's just call it pt and you will see why and then we have to return and for now let's just return a simple div so we're going to say div and this will say let's say hello and now we can import it in our hero section so let's say import and we want to import custom image from dot forward slash custom image since we are already inside a components folder okay now let's give this column a class of gallery so gallery and inside that we'll have our custom image so custom image save it go to our page and it says hello but in our finished project we have one two three six nine images so let's copy it nine times two three four five six seven eight nine save and this is how they looks like okay now let's go to our let's give this section a class of hero so this is our hero section and then in our style.scss index.scss sorry let's target hero section so dot section dot hero and let's target gallery 
let's say this will have a display of grid so display equals to grid and then we can say grid template columns we're going to say repeat and we're going to repeat it three times so we're going to say repeat three and one fr save it and now I have this three by three image three by three grid sorry okay now our custom image let's give this div a class of custom image so class name equals to custom image and let's copy the class it should be image let's copy this control c go to our index.scss and let's paste it here uh, under the button so dot custom but image for now let's just say they will have a background color of red so background color equals to red save it so now they have this little bit background color okay let's separate them by saying grid gap so here we can simply say gap let's say two viewport width and let's see if two viewport width is enough yeah two viewport width let's make it 1.75 viewport width it should be 1.75 not 175 like so this is pretty close to what we have okay now what we also want to do is um, here is our custom image we are going to give them a height so height equals to zero so they won't have any height so we can see them so the way we are going to make them a fixed width is by saying width equals to 100 percent and we are also going to say padding top so padding top equals to if we say 100 percent we get this size if we were to say 60 percent or 70 percent we get this much if we say 80 percent we get this much so we are going to control the size of our image by controlling the padding top so by default we don't want any padding top why that is because we'll receive the padding top as our prop so in our hero section let's give them some padding top so we're going to say pt for padding top and let's make it a string so let's try 70 percent and we might have to change it but for now let's go to our custom image and here we are going to use style so we're going to say style also it will be double set of curly brace let me close the sidebar and here we are going to say padding top and the padding top will be simply our pt pt is our prop and this much is 70 percent let's see and i think we have more than 70 so let's try making it 90 we can try 80 also let's see if 80 looks any good or 85 and yeah 85 i think is pretty close to what we have okay now instead of just writing it nine times let's only keep one and we want to create a create an array of all the images so we're going to say const images equals to images will be an array okay let me open up my sidebar back as you can see in our public folder inside this image folder inside the gallery we have 10 images so we're going to use those images images are in public folder we can access them simply by saying forward slash images actually it is img forward slash gallery forward slash img underscore one dot jpg and we have to create eight more so image two image three four five six seven eight nine okay nine of them so now we can loop through all our images so here we're simply going to say images dot map we're going to loop through all our images for each of them we're going to just return this custom image component save it and now again we have this 9 by 9 grid so now we also want to let's see in our custom image we're receiving the source as a prop actually let's call it image source so img src oops src copy this control c go to our hero section so here we're going to say source image source equals to equals to source like so and we also need a key so let's say we are going to receive both source and index it should be source 
and let's say key equals to index save it and nothing changes yet but now in our custom image component what we're going to do is instead of simply just saying hello we're going to return we're going to have an image text so we're going to say img the source will be image source the source we passed and the alt can be nothing an empty string save it and now we have these images but we as you can see they are off so what we are going to do is go to our index index.scss our custom image will have a position of relative so position relative and let's target the image inside that so img image will have a position of absolute so position of absolute the top will be zero the left will be zero the height will be hundred percent and the width will be hundred percent okay save it this is how they looks like we can make them look a little bit better by saying the object fit to cover so let's target image separately all of our images will have an object fit so object fit of cover so now they are looking a bit better okay now we want a little bit of padding here so let's target our let's let's give this column a class so let's go to our hero section let's give it a class of typography copy this control c let's go to our index.scss let's target that and let's say this this will have some padding on the right side so padding right let's say 1 em and let's see and yeah 1 em should be good enough so this is how they look like but now in our finished project if we refresh as you can see those images comes one after another so let's see how we can do that so let's target the custom image here so in the gallery we have the custom image dot custom image so let's say by default they will have a transform of scale to let's say zero so they will be hidden by default actually let's just make it point 0.1 so we can barely see our image just so that we know the images are here and they will have some animation so we're going to say animation and the animation duration will be let's say get animation duration like so that animation duration can be let's say 0.3 second and the name will be let's say pop out and now we have to create this pop out function let's do that so control c and then let's go to our animations and let's create that animation so we're going to say add keyframes and we're, we have called it pop out so we're going to say from it will be transform equals to scale and the scale will be zero by default and the opacity will also be zero so we're going to say opacity equals to zero and the two will be scale to one and opacity to one save it click on refresh as you can see they they pops out and then they goes back so to prevent them from going back we can simply say the animation fill mode will be forward so we simply have to say forwards save it and now they grows and they stays that way okay let's remove this transform we don't need them save it refresh this is how they looks like but all of them comes at the same time but we want them to come in a spiral fashion let's see how we can do that so for that we have to say we have to individually give them an animation delay so we're going to say and colon nth child so let's say and colon nth child the first one does not need any animation delay let's start by start with the second one so the animation delay can be let's say 0.1 second if we now save it refresh so for, first this one comes and then this one you'll notice and then this one should come so we're going to simply copy this it seven more times so okay after this one then this one should come so the second third one this one can have animation de delay of 0.2 second and after that this one should come so this is one two three four five sixth element so let's say it's six the animation delay will be 0.3 second and after six one this one should come so this is the ninth element so let's say nine the animation delay will be let's say 0.4 second after that this one should come so this is the eighth one so we're going to say eight this will have an animation delay of 0.5 second 
after that we have this seventh one so let's target the seventh and that animation delay for this one will be 0.6 and then this one so this is the fourth element so let's say four and our fourth element will have a 0.7 second animation delay and let me copy this one more time so alt shift down and then we have our fifth element lastly so fifth element will have animation delay of 0.8 seconds save it and now if i were to click on refresh okay let's see why this is jittering let's try to make the animation delay to let's say five seconds okay actually we do need that transform so we're going to say transform equals to scale to zero and we're also going to say opacity to zero so opacity equals to zero save it and now it should work fine so yeah now this looks much better pretty close to what we had in our finished project and actually let's make them 90 so for the padding top we're going to make it 90 and yeah this is a bit better and we also need some border radius here so let's do that so we're going to go to our index.scss here is our custom image so we're going to say border radius up let's say 3 pixel and we're also going to have to say overflow to hidden save it and they have this rounded corner just like our finished project okay so this should be all for our hero section and for this video so in the next video we're going to create this improve your skill section this should be much more simpler so i'll see you in the next video now let's create the improve your skill section so let's create another component so inside the component folder we're going to click on new file and let's call it improve skill section so then we're going to say export default so export default function and the name will be improve skills and as always for testing we're going to simply return a simple text so let's use a div so we're going to say div let's say hello and let's import it in our app component so in our app we're going to say import we're going to import improve skills from components forward slash improve skills dot js or you can leave the extension it will still work okay so after the hero section we'll have our improve skills section so we're going to say improve skills like so save in our project now we have this hello okay let's go to our index.scss let's target our section so here is our section so let's say all of our section will have some margin on the bottom so we're going to say margin bottom of let's say 1 em let's see uh, more than one let's try 3 em actually let's try it viewport width that way it would be more responsive so 3 viewport width and for now let's keep it we'll change it if needed okay let's see in our hero section okay let's go to our hero section for reference and we can copy some of this so let's copy this control c close it and we can paste it here control v so we don't need any of we don't need the paragraph text the button will say sign up let's see yeah it says sign up now so we're going to type that so let's say sign up now then we can copy this title also so control c and paste it here control v and for this one the class name won't be hero let's call it improve skills okay and then we won't have this gallery section so i'm going to cut this and give it a separate class name let's give it a class name of image okay but in this section we'll have image on the left side and content on the right side so let me cut this so control x and we can paste it here actually not here and we can paste it here control v and here we're going to have an image so let's use an image tag okay let's try to use this 10th image from our gallery which is this one okay so we simply have to say forward slash img 
then for slash gallery and then img underscore 10 dot jpg so img underscore 10 dot jpg save it and here is our image and here is our section okay let's style them so okay this one has class of section and improved skills so let's copy this control c let's go to our index.scss and we are going to paste it here so control v okay before we do anything here let's clean up our file one more time so let's cut all of this these are for our hero section so control x in our partials we are going to create a new file so we are going to call it underscore hero section hero dash section dot scss like so paste it and again save it and then we can import it in our component so we are going to say at import we are going to import partials for slash this will be our hero section so we are going to say hero dash section save it and everything still works the same okay now let's style our improve section so in our improve section we have a image section let's see yeah a column with a class of img so let's do that so we're going to say dot call for column dot img the image column let's target the image inside that so the image will have a width of 100% save it and now the width is fixed and the next one is the typography so let's again copy this control c go to our index.scss so let's say dot call then dot typography this one will have some padding on the left side so we're going to say pl for padding left and let's try 1em and 1em should be good enough and then we'll have this list so for that i'm going to create an array so we're going to create an array so we're going to say const let's just call it list it will be an array and you can simply copy stuff from here so i'm going to copy one at a time so control c control v and let me do this for all of them okay i have copied all of them so now we can use it so let's use the loop here so we're going to say list.map we're going to get our item and index and let's try to return something so we're going to return a div actually let's just return a simple paragraph text that would be enough so the queue will be indexed and then here we'll get the item save it and now here is our list okay let's give them a class so we're going to say class name equals to and the class name can be let's say skill item like so let's copy this so control c like so save it go to our index.scss and let's target our skill item so first of all they will have some border on the left side so we're going to say border left the left can be let's say 0.5 em it will be solid and the color will be our primary color of course so we're going to say dash dash primary color it will be var dash dash primary dash color like so save it now we have this border let's also add some margin so we're going to say margin bottom the margin bottom can be let's try 0.5 em so let's say 0.5 em let's see okay 0.5 em might be good this one should be let's say 0.2 em it will also have some padding on the left side so we're going to say padding left of the try 0.5 em like so okay this is even thinner let's see what can we do so let's try just 0.2 em and yeah point 0.2 should be good enough let's also add some padding on the top and bottom so we're going to say padding equals to the top can be let's say 0.25 em the right can be zero the bottom will be again 0.2 em and the left will be 0.5 em save it and this is how this looks like let's see okay let's try just 0.1 em and yeah 0.1 em should be pretty close let's also say they will have a color color of color light so we're going to say var and here we're going to say dash dash text dash light like so and we're also going to say font weight to bold so font weight equals to bold save and this is how they looks like okay we also want some margin on the bottom so let's target the button and this will have some margin on the top so margin top of let's try 0.5 em 
let's try 0.75 okay let's just try 1 em here so 1 em save and i think 1 em is good enough okay our pa padding here is bit too much compared to here so let's try to change it a little bit for now later on we'll make it responsive so don't worry there okay and now it is looking pretty similar to what we have in our finished project not exactly the same but should be good enough our h ones are too big so let's try to make them smaller so in our section the title the font size can be let's say 2.5 em and the font weight can be 900 so let's say font dash weight equals to 900 like so and now it is a bit closer to what we have in our finished project again not exactly the same but should be good enough you can play with it okay let's just make it 0.75 back so 0.75 em okay now we need to create this animation so as you can see our items comes one after another so here we're going to so in our CSS let's go back go to the skill item and here we're going to give them an animation so we're going to say animation equals to the duration will be again we are going to use our get duration function let's say 0.5 second and the name will be slide in right so slide so this will make them slide in from the right side so copy this control C and we are we are going to have to create this function so for that we are going to go to our animations and then we are going to say add keyframes and we called it slide in right so we are going to say from so it will say transform it will translate x to 100% the opacity will also be 0 so we are going to say opacity equals to 0 and then we are going to say 2 the transform is going to be translate x to 0 and the opacity will be 1 save it let's go here click on refresh and they comes like this and we want them to stagger so one should come after another so let's do that so here we're going to say by default all of them should have a transform of translate x so translate x to 100 percent and the opacity will be zero also so opacity equals to zero so now we are going to have to say our animation fill mode will be forwards so here we simply have to say forwards if we do this and save it nothing should change yet as you can see everything works the same but now we should be able to use some animation delay here so again we are going to use a for loop so we are going to say at for and then we are going to say dollar i from 1 to not 3 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 elements so we are going to say 6 actually we can start from 2 since we don't want our first element to have any animation delay and then we here we have to say hashtag curly brace so hashtag curly brace inside that we can say dollar one for the animation delay we can simply say hashtag curly brace dollar i times point one second save it click on refresh okay it's we don't want this as here let's try it one more time save it click on refresh let's try to say one two six save Okay, one two three four five six let's try seven here save it click on refresh and now everything comes one after another let me try make this two back i think our original one is a bit faster so you can make it point three play with it and yeah this should be good enough and i think that's all for this tutorial and in the next video we're going to create this quote section and after that we're going to create our top chef section so i'll see you in the next videos in this video let's quickly create this quote section so i'm going to close this animation i'm going to close this improve skill section and in our components let me create a new file and i'm going to call it let's say quote section so quote section dot js and again we are going to say export default function we called it quote section so let's say quote section and we are going to return 
we're going to return a div with a class of section so we're going to say div the class name will be section like so and we are going to call it quote so this will this will be our quote section after that we can have a paragraph text this will have a class name of quote text so let's say class name equals to quote text and we can copy this quote so control c paste it control v and after that we'll have a another paragraph text that will have a class name of author or quote author so let's say class name equals to quote dash author and for the author name again we are going to copy this control c paste it control v save okay let's try to import it in our app component so let's go here and say import we want to import quote section from components for slash quote section like so let's use it here so we're going to say quote section like so save it and here is our quote section okay let's try to style it so section and quotes so let's let's just copy this control C go to here and we can paste it let's see around here Okay, before we write anything, let's again clean up our CSS file. So we're going to cut all of this. Control X. And then in our partials, we're going to create a new file. Let's call it underscore improve skills. Or let's just call it improve section. Dot SCSS. Like so, paste it. Control V, save. Close this. And we're going to say import, at import. And we want to import partials forward slash. This will be our improve section. Like so, save it. Nothing changed, so it is working. Okay, then now let's target our quote section. So inside that, we have let's see, quote text, I think. Yeah, quote text. Copy this. Paste it. Okay, let's see. Here, our font size is a bit bigger, so we're going to say font size. And the font size can be let's try 1.2 em let's see i think 1.2 em should be good but one thing you'll notice they are in two columns because our section has a display of flex so this for this one we're going to say display equals to block like so save it and now this author name is below the text okay let's see let's increase the line height so we're going to say actually let's try to make it 0.3 first and then we're going to say line height of let's try 1.3 save and this is how this looks like let's see okay let's try 1.2 and this should work okay let's target our quote author so control c we're going to paste it here so control v for this one we're going to have a color of text light so we're going to say color equals to var we're going to say dash dash text dash light and for this one we forgot to say the color will be text color so we're going to say color equals to var dash dash text dash color save this is how that looks like okay this one will also have a text align of right so text align of right like so it can also have some margin on the top so margin top of let's try 1 em and i think 1 em should be good enough and we also have this svg icon so let's create that icon so first we have to import font awesome and then the icon so we're going to say import font awesome We are going to import font awesome icon and we are also going to import fa quote save it let's see if we have any error okay we don't have any error okay so let's try to use it so we're going to say font awesome and we are also going to say icon let me close the sidebar so we are going to say icon equals to our fa quote so fa quote 
like so save it okay fa dash quote is not exported let's see i think it is quote left okay it should be left also okay actually we have to import it from solid icon not from font awesome so we're going to say import fa quote left from font awesome free solid svg icons like so it should be icon and now we have this icon over here so let's style it so we're going to target the svg so the svg is our icon the color will be our primary color so color equals to bar dash dash primary color save this is how this looks let's say font size so font size of this one let's say 1.5 em this is a bit bigger let's see okay we also need some margin on the right side so we're going to say margin right of let's try 0.5 em and i think this should be good enough yeah this should be good enough okay that's all for this tutorial in the next videos we are going to create our top shape section so i'll see you in the next video in this video let's create our top shape section which is this section here so in the components folder i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it shape section dot js and let's create a function so we're going to say export default function and we're going to call it shape section and let's return something so we're going to say return and here we're going to have a div with a class name of section let's also give it a class of shapes and close the div like so here for now let's just say hello and let's try to use it in our app comp app.js so let's go to app and here we want to import our top shape section so we're going to say import shape section from components for slash shape section like so and let's use it here so we're going to say shape section save it and here is our hello so it is working okay now we're going to create a title so we are going to use a h1 with the class of title so let's use a h1 and the class name will be title so class name equals to title let's just copy this control c paste it control v save and here is our text okay after that we want this card so i am going to have a div that will wrap all these cards so let's create a div and the class name will be top chefs container and here we're going to have some cards like so so i'm going to create a component for each of this so let's create a component so new file let's call it chef card dot js like so and here again we're going to say export default function shapes shape card like so so for the markup we're, we're first going to have a div that will have a class name of shape card inside that we're going to have an image so we can just have an image we don't need a div here we're going to have some image and for the alt tag we can have just an empty string like so and let's use a random image here so in our public folder inside the sh top shapes folder again we have some images let's use them and once again i'll leave the link to these images in the video description so you can get them from there okay so since our images are in public folder we can say forward slash img and then we have this top shapes folder so top dash shapes and then let's just choose img underscore one dot jpg okay then we have this shape card info where we'll have all these infos so for now let's just have some random name so let's just copy this Control V. After that, we'll have recipe count. So shape dash recipe count. Like so. So here we can say recipe. Recipes. Colon. And then we'll have a bold text. So B like so. 
here we'll have some numbers so let's just say 10 for now copy this all shift down and then we'll have cuisine so shape dash cuisine and let's say cuisine here also and this one let's just say mexican and then we'll have this icon so we'll create the icon in a moment but for now let's try to import it and use it so in our shape section let's try to import that card so we're going to say import we're going to import shape card from dot for slash shape card since we are already in this component folder components folder okay let's try to use it so top shape container inside the top shapes container let's try to use it so let's just say shapes card like so save in our component so as you can see everything has rendered but this looks ugly so let's tell them so our section let's copy this control c let's go to our index.scss and let's paste it after the quote section here so we can paste it here like so and let's cut this out so this is this this was for our quote section let's control x this and here let's create a new file so new file we're going to call it underscore quote section dot scss paste it save close it and we're going to set import and we're going to import partials for slash quote section save okay we have spelled it wrong so let me rename this so we're going to click on rename and this should be quote q u o t e like so save and everything still works the same okay now our shape section will have a display of block so we're going to say display equals to block save and now they are in separate lines okay before we style anything we have one two three and three here so six cards so let's use six card here so i'm going to copy this five more time one two three four five save and here we have six of them so they are not looking that good so let's style them so here is our card so this has a class of chef card so let me copy this control c and we're going to paste it here so dot control v shape card this will have a display of flex so display of flex and this will have a height of 120 pixels so 120 pixels like so let's target the image inside that so img the image inside that will have a height of 100 percent so we're going to say height of 100 percent and we're going to say this will have a width of 120 pixels so 120 pixels so this will be a square image okay our image will also have a border radius so we're going to say border radius the border radius can be let's say 5 pixel and we also want some box shadows so actually let's add the box shadow later before that let's create the grid so this grid here so for that we're going to go to our top chef section let's copy this so top chef's container paste it and we're going to say this will have a display of grid so we're going to say display grid like so and then we're going to say grid template columns we're going to say repeat and we're going to use the auto fit function and then we're going to say min max and we're going to say the minimum width will be 280 pixel and maximum width will be one fractional unit okay and then we're also going to say the grid gap the gap can be let's say 1.5 em like so save let's go here and now as you can see well we already have this grid here and if we try to resize our screen as you can see now we have this th three column four column and two column and one column so this is also responsive because we use the auto fit function with min max we also want some icons here so let's go to our shape card here we're going to have another paragraph text so we can have a paragraph text and here let's just call them class name equals to we're going to call it shape dash icons shape dash icons and again we're going to use our font awesome icons here so let's import font awesome so let's go here and we're going to say import we going to import font awesome so font awesome icon from react font awesome icon like so and then we're also going to say import we want to import fa facebook so fa facebook we want let's see 
we want Twitter and Instagram so we're also going to say FA Twitter and we want FA Instagram like so and we're importing them from front awesome forward slash free brands icon not solid icons remember these are brands icon okay let's try to use them let's see okay here we're going to say font awesome icon so font awesome icon and then we're going to say icon equals to fa facebook let's copy this two more time and this one will be fa twitter so we're going to say fa twitter and the last one can be fa instagram so fa instagram like so save let's see if they are rendered so here are our icons so okay let's tell them now so we're going to copy this shape card info Control c to copy let's go to our index.scss and inside the shape card we have our we're going to paste it Control v okay this one will also have a height of 100 percent so if you were to say background color so background color of red for now go here this one have 100 percent of the available width okay let me just delete this this one will also have a display of flex so we're going to say display of flex and this will have a flex direction of column like so and we're going to say justify content to center save it actually not center we're going to say space between so space between like so and this is how they look pretty close to what we have okay let's say this will have just a little bit of padding on the bottom so we're going to say padding bottom of let's say 0.5 em so just a little bit of space in the bottom side okay let's say they, this will also have some padding on the left side so we're going to say padding left let's try 1 em and i think this should be good okay let's say box shadow for our image so let's say box dash shadow let's say the x-axis will be 0 the y-axis can be say 3 pixel and the blur can be 6 pixel and the color will be our shadow color save okay so now let's target the name so our name has a class of shape card name so this one this one can, can have a font size of 1.2 em the font weight can be bold and the co color can be text color let's see and we need it bigger so let's try 1.5 okay let's just keep 1 Point 0.5 for now we will change it if needed so after that we have the chef's recipe count and cuisine so let's copy them so we're going we're going to have chef recipe count and where we also need the chef cuisine so they will have a color of text light so we're going to say color of text light we can also say the font size to be let's say 1.2 em and this is how they look like let's see okay let's keep them like so let's target the icons so our icons are in this paragraph text that has a class name of chef's I chef icons copy this paste it here so here we can say font size of let's try 1.2 em so our icons are a bit bigger and let's target the svg so we're going to say svg and let's say they will have some margin on the right side let's say 0.5 em okay now let's color our icons so this one should be the blue color so let's target the first child so we're going to say and colon first child so and colon first child actually let's just use nth child here so nth child when to target our first child and for the color we can copy them from our finished project so let me just click on inspect and this is the color so let me copy this Control c go here and here we, we can say color equals to the color we copied let's copy this two more times so one two let's target our second child so two and again we can inspect the color so this is the color let's just copy this one more time and finally let's do this for our instagram icon as well so this is the color Control c this will be our third child paste the color control v like so save and this is how they look like okay now instead of just hard coding them we are going to create an array here so we're going to say const shifts equals to this will be an array and let me just quickly paste the code that i already have to save time
So I have created an array of objects. So each object has a name an image which just goes to this image folder. So for example, this image one from the top shapes folder, all of them have a recipe count, a cuisine, and I have created just six, six of them. Each of them have different name and image, etc. So now we can loop over our object instead of just hard coding them. So let me just comment it out for now. So now we can say shapes dot map. So shapes dot map. For each of them, we're we'll, we're going to get our shape, and then we're going to render the shape card. We're going to say the key equal to shape name shape dot name, and then we are also going to pass the shape object as our prop. So save it, and this still works the same but now we are also passing this prop so in our shape component we will be able to get this so let's try to get it so actually we are already getting it so shape like so so now instead of hard coding the image we can say shape dot image dot img save and now we have different image so let's do the same for the name so let's just cut this here we are going to say shape dot name And let's see what else do we have so here we have the recipes count let's go here and inside this b tag instead of just saying 10 we're going to say chef dot recipes count and finally we have chef dot cuisine like so so now each of our chef have different recipe count cuisine and name um, it is mostly done, but you'll notice that in the finished project if I were to resize my screen You can see on smaller screen. We have this box shadow on our card. So let's see how we can do that So in our small screen we do get this one column layout, but we don't have any shadow So let's create the shadow. So in our shape section Let's go to our index.scss. So our shape card. Where is that here? This one will have a background color. So background color and the background color will be our var dash dash background dash light so background actually just background color sorry so our background color like so so our background color is white that is why we can't see it right now but if it was a different color then we'd be able to see it okay anyways now we're going to copy this so let me just copy this control c you know we're going to scroll down to our media query when the screen size is small like this in that case let's just paste this and we're going to say this one will have some box shadow so we're going to say box shadow and the box shadow can be let's say the 5 pixel 0 pixel for the x-axis 5 pixel for the y-axis 10 pixel for the blur and the color will be our shadow color so this is how they look like okay one one more thing that we want to do is let me just go back we're going to say the border radius will be 5 pixels so border radius of 5 pixel and we're also going to say overflow to hidden so overflow hidden save and now this have this rounded corner and if we were to sc scale up our page the shadow is gone on smaller screen we have shadow but on large screen we don't have any shadow okay so i think that's all for our top shape section actually no we need a little bit of margin here so in our finished project we don't have any margin so let's do that so our top shapes container will some have some margin top so we're going to say margin top of let's try 2 em let's try 3 em and yeah now it is looking much better and that's all for this video in the next video we're going to create our footer after that we're going to make everything responsive so subscribe for that and i'll see you next time in this video let's create our footer section so in our components i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call it footer.js and here we're going to say export default we're going to say function and the name will be footer and here we are going to say return we are going to return a div with a class of footer so div and the class name will be footer and inside our footer we are going to have some sections so we are going to say footer dash section our footer will have one two three section okay so let me just close this div first so like so each of our section will have a paragraph with a class name of title so we're going to say class name equals to title let me just copy this control c paste it control p and then we'll have some regular paragraph text also
so again let me just copy this here so control c paste it control v we'll have another one and this one will say at 2021 20, alright reserved control v instead of saying at we're going to say and sign c o p y copy for the copyright symbol like so and we are going to copy this whole section two more time so all shape down down okay for the second one let's just say contact us so let me copy this control c paste it and then we're going to have this email and we are going to copy this two more times so i'll shift down down let me just copy the rest like this okay now let's use it in our app components so let's go to our app.js here we are going to say import we want to import footer from components for slash footer and we want to place our footer outside our container so here so we are going to say footer save and this is how they look like no style applied at all so let's style them so let's go here so first we have this footer class so copy this control c and let's go to our index.scss first let me cut all of this so control x and inside our partials folder we're going to create a new file we're going to call it underscore chef section dot j yes like Actually, it's not JS, it should be SCSS. It's a CSS file, SAS file, like so, and paste it, control V, and close it. And we're going to import that. So we're going to set import partials, and then we called it chef section. And everything still works the same. So now let's target our footer. So we're going to say dot footer. First, we're going to give it a background color. So, background color, and let's just copy the color. So, let me just click on inspect. And this is the color. So, let me copy this. Control C. We're going to paste it. Control V. Save. And this is how they look like. And let's also give it a color. So, we're going to say the color will be our. We, we don't want to use any variables. We're simply going to say hashtag FFF white save. And this is how this looks like. Okay, our footer will also have a class of container. So now if this has some padding on the left and right. Let's also give it some padding on top and bottom. So we're going to say padding block. So padding dash block. Let's try 4 em. And now we have some padding on top and bottom. Let's see. And 4 em is too much. So let's reduce it to let's say 3 em and i think this should be good enough for now we'll change it later on if needed but for now let's just say this will have a display and the display will be let's say grid so grid and we forgot a semicolon here so let me put it and this is how this looks like so then we're going to say grid template column so grid template columns the first one will be 2 hs mass as the other one so we're going to say 2fr 1fr 1fr save it but let me try to refresh and yeah now it is working so as you can see they have this much width but the first one has twice as much as this one let's also add some gap so we're going to say grid gap and the gap can be let's say 1 em okay now inside our footer we have the footer section so let me copy this control c control v inside that we have some paragraph text so let's say our paragraph text actually let me have a semicolon here and the paragraph text will have a opacity so opacity of let's say 0.8 so they are a little bit lighter not completely white but then let's target our paragraph that has a class of title so once with the class of title we'll have opacity of one so we're going to say opacity of one like so okay they will also have a font weight of bold so we're going to say font weight of bold and they will have some margin on the bottom so margin bottom of one em like so let's target the regular paragraph text so they will have some margin on the bottom as well so margin bottom 0.5 em save and this is how this looks like okay let's try to make it 0.9 okay let's say this one will also have a font size so font size of 1.1 em like so 
and I think this should be pretty close to what we have in our finished project. However, as you can see, this is not responsive. So in the next video, we're going to make this section and this section all responsive. So I'll see you in the next video. In this video, let's try to make our page look a bit nicer by making it a bit more responsive. So I'm going to start by seeing our container. Initially, we'll have a padding line of 25 viewport width. Save it. And now we have a lot of white space here. So we need more media queries. So we're going to say, let me just copy this line. So control C and paste it control V so here we're going to say at the max width of 1280 pixels so 1280 pixel our container will have a padding let me just type it so dot container so our container will have a padding in line so padding let me just copy this control C and paste it control V and let's say the container will have a padding in line of 18 viewport width after that, I'm going to copy this whole thing. So I'll shift down and this time the max width will be 1050 pixels. So max width of 1050 pixels. The max width will be 12 viewport width. And then when it is 760 pixels, so max width is 760 pixels. Let me just copy this. Let me paste it. Let's say here, control V. The max width will be 6 viewport width. So I'm going to say 6 viewport width. And finally again let me just copy this one final time copy this and paste it below so control V and at the max width of 480 pixels so at smaller screen the padding in line will be let's say 3 viewport width save it and now we have good amount of padding on almost all screen sizes like so and on smaller screen we want this to be one column each so here we're going to say our section so at 768 pixel max we're going to say our section Let's target the column inside that so dot call. So they will have a width of 100%. So 100% 100 save. It should be call, not con. And let's try to refresh. Okay, let's see why it is not working. So we are going to say flex wrap to wrap. So we are going to say flex dash wrap to wrap. By default, it is no wrap. So now this is how this looks like. Okay, now let's go to again. Let's go to our media query. So, which is here. Okay, we're going to say they will have no padding. So, we're going to say padding of zero. We're also going to say exclamation mark important to overwrite any previous styles. And then we're going to say the text align. So, text align of center, like so. Let's say they will also have some margin on the bottom. So, margin bottom of 2 em. And this is how they look like, which is much better. Now this list here, I want them to be inline like so. So let's do that. First, let's target that. So in our partials folder, we're going to go to our improve section. So as you can see, they have a class name of skill item. So let's copy this. So control C skill item. Let's go to our media query. Let's target that. So we're going to say skill item. We're going to say display of inline dash block. Okay, it is working. So let's say that this will have some margin on the right side. So we're going to say margin right of 1 em. This is how they look like. Let's see. Okay, let's say the margin bottom of 1 em also. So let's say margin bottom. Okay, let's also target our button. So here we're going to say dot skill section button. So here is our improved skills and we're going to target the button. And the button will have a display block so we're going to say display block save and this is how this looks like but i want this button to be in the middle so we're also going to say margin left so we're going to say margin left of 50 percent and then we're also going to say transform of translate x so translate x of negative 50 percent so negative 50 percent save and now button is also in the center let's just say margin instead of left and right save so now we have a bit more margin or white space. Okay, let's try to make it 0.75. Let's see if that looks any better. Let's refresh. And I think 0.75 should be good enough. And everything else is looking good except for our footer. So let's target our footer now. So we're going to say dot footer. And here we're going to say grid template column. So we're going to say grid template column. 
and here we're going to say repeat we're going to repeat it four times and we're going to say one fr save okay now we want this section here to take the entire width so this one is to have a span of four so let's target that so we're going to say let me go to our footer here we have the footer section so let me copy this so we're going to say dot footer section and we're going to target the first child so we're going to say n child one and here we're going to say grid column so grid column and here we're going to say span Four, so it will span across the entire four column and as you can see it spans across the entire four column and then we're going to target the rest of the two so let me just copy this control C we're going to paste it two times so one two so then we're going to target this second and third gel so we're going to say two and finally three so third gel let me close the sidebar now let's say they will have a grid column so grid column of where we're going to say span and they will span two columns so save and this is how they look like so our footer is also responsive now and everything else is also responsive the nav bar and everything else but as you can see something is wrong here so let's go to our sidebar so our sidebar is in the nav bar section so let me just open my side sidebar and go to our nav bar and in the nav bar we have this sidebar let's give it a z index so Actually, let's see if we have given a z index to our neighbor first. So, our neighbor does not have any z index, so let's give it a z index. So let me just cut this, and here we're going to say this will have a z index, so z dash index. And the z index can be let's say 998 for our neighbor. Let me copy this and let's target our sidebar. So, this is our sidebar. Let's give our sidebar a z index as well. So our sidebar will have a z index of 999 so more than our navbar save and now our navbar is above everything else in our finished project you'll see our navbar is fixed on the top but in our current project the navbar is not fixed so let, let's make it fixed also so here we are going to say our navbar will have a position position will be fixed and the width will be 100% so we're going to say width of 100% so now our navbar is fixed but now our text is hidden behind the navbar so our navbar has a height of 55 pixels so in our index.scss let's target our body so our body will have a padding top so we're going to say padding top of 55 pixel and let's go to our navbar and our navbar will have a top of zero so we're going to say top zero and now everything looks good and it is working as we intended our navbar is fixed our sidebar is also working nothing is coming over what it should so i think that should be all for this video in the next video we're going to implement the react router so i'll see you in the next video in this video we're going to implement the react router so we're going to create a separate page for our home page recipes page and settings page and we're going to make everything work so first we're going to go to our app components actually first let me close some files that we don't need okay so in our app component app.js we have these sections here so this four section here so this section this section this code section and self section this four section makes up our home page so i'm going to cut all of this so control x and instead i'm going to create a file here so in actually first i'm going to create a folder so we're going to call it pages inside that we're going to put all up our pages so new file we're going to call it home dot js which is our home page so here we're going to say export default so home page is also just a react component so we're going to say export default we're going to say function and we're going to call it home and here we're going to say return and we're simply going to have to return the elements that we copied so which is this four thing but now we have to import it here instead of in app component so let me just cut all of this so control x control s let's go here and we're going to paste them here control v so here this is not dot for slash component now it will be dot dot for slash component because we're going to go outside of this page and then inside the component folder so when you say dot dot for slash dot dot for slash dot dot for slash like so save we have to wrap them inside a div because we can't return more than one element so let me cut this so control x create a div and paste them here so now it is working
Okay, now just like our home component, let's just create a page for our recipes and settings. So we're going to say pages, new file, and we're going to create a recipes dot js let's say export default function and we're going to call it recipes we're going to say return let's just return a div and it will say recipes page so this should be all for now we're going to create this page later so for now let's just create our settings page as well so we're going to say settings dot js let me just paste it and this one will be settings and this will also say settings page like so now in our home component we're going to import those three pages so we're going to say import we're going to import home from pages slash home we're going to import our recipes so we're going to say import recipes from pages for slash recipes and we're going to import settings should be import settings from pages for slash settings okay so now if we're on local host colon 3000 we want to show the home page if we are on for slash recipes we want to show the recipes page and if we are on settings we want to show settings page so for that we're going to implement a crowder so we're going to say import We are going to import browser router so we are going to say browser router as router. We are also going to import routes and we are going to import route from so we are going to say from and we are to import them from react dash router dash dom react router dom save okay so we have installed the react router version 6 so now instead of having this app component here where we want everything to be wrapped in our router component so we're going to say router like so and let's cut them so let's cut all of this control x we don't need this div we can delete this we can paste them so control v and let's see if we have any error or not okay we need a parenthesis here closing parenthesis save and everything still work the same and after that we want our routes so routes so all the routes must be inside this route component so here we can have a route component so route and then we're going to say path so when our path is forward slash we want our component so component we want our component to be our home page so here we are going to say home like so actually not component this should be element and now we have this home page so just like the home we are also going to create our recipes and the settings we are going to say when the path is recipes when to show our recipe component so which is our recipes page when the path is settings we want to go to the settings page save and everything still works the same so now let's go to our navbar component so in our components folder we have our navbar this is our navbar so here we are using a tag but now we want to use the link tag from react router dom so we're going to say import we want to import link from react router dom We are going to use this link tag here so control C and instead of a tag we are going to say link control V and let's change the closing tag to link tag also so control V and link tag needs a two property so we are going to say two prop equals to we are going to say link dot path save and now let's try to use it. So recipe, as you can see it says recipes page when we are in recipes page and it says settings when we are in settings page. So this is working. So let's do the same for our sidebar also. So let's go to our sidebar component which is here. So first we are going to say import link in our sidebar also. So copy this control C we are going to paste it. So control V again we are going to use the link tag instead of a tag. So control C control V control v 
and again we are going to say to equals to and this will be link dot path save let's try to minimize our screen or resize our screen and let's see if this works so if you go to recipes now it says recipes page if you go to settings it says settings page so everything is still working okay now when we are in home page when this home will be highlighted so let's see how we can do that okay so indicate the current path we are going to also import something called use location from the react router dom library so use location is a function functional hook so we are going to say const location equals to use location like so so now we'll be able to say location dot path to get the path name so let's do that so we're going to say let me copy this control c and here instead of simply using this class name here we're going to say class name so class name equals to we're going to use a binding here so we're going to say if location dot path name equal equals to link dot path so link dot path if it is true in that case our class name will be this so let me just copy this so the class name so control c actually we don't need this href here anymore and we don't need this class name also so we are al already creating this new class name let me close the sidebar here we are going to say if this is true the class name will be sidebar link and it will have a class of active otherwise let me just say colon so if that is not true in that case the class name will be just sidebar link save it let's see if it's working let me minimize my screen so as you can see now this home here has this border meaning that it is active if we have to click on this let's go here and as you can see now this one is this one has a class of active that is why this have this border okay let's do the same for our navbar also so navbar links so let me just copy this so use location and then in the navbar we're going to paste it like so and then again we are going to copy this line so control c let's paste it i think we can paste it here so control v and finally let's copy this class binding so let's just copy this control c and let's go to our link and finally we can paste it let's say here so in this time if it is true the class name will be active otherwise the class name will be nothing like so and actually we can delete this commented codes we don't need it save so now the recipes page is active by default if you have to click on home the home page is now active if we are going to settings the settings page is active and even if you have to go to settings like this the settings page is highlighted and if you go back to our home page the home page is highlighted so these are highlighted according to the path so that's all for this video and in the next video we are going to start creating our recipes page we are going to create this section in the next video so i'll see you in the next one hello guys in this video we are going to create this previous search section in our recipes page so let's do that but before that as you can see in our terminal we have two warnings so let's try to get rid of them so it is saying that we should use triple equal sign instead of just two equal sign in navbar and sidebar so let's go to our navbar and in line 38 so here we are using two equal sign we just have to use three so this is just a warning from linter this is not an error or anything it's just a good practice save and now in our sidebar again in line nine so let's go to line nine which is here we just have to add another equal sign like so and now our warnings are gone so let's start building this section here so let me open up my sidebar and now we want to work on our recipes page so for now we only have this text here so let's go to our recipes page which is here so as you can see we have this dummy text but now we want to start creating this section so let's do that so i'm going to create a div let's give it a class so let's say class name equals to previous search and then we are going to have a h2 so header 2 tag and this will simply say previous searches so i'm going to copy this control c and paste it control v like so and here it is it says previous searches okay after that we're going to have div another div and this will have a class name of previous searches container so let's copy this control c and paste it and then say dash container So inside that we are going to have some items for the items i'm going to create an array so i'm going to say const searches 
like so and our array will contain this item so let me populate it real quick okay so as you can see i have added some items in our searches array okay let's use it now so here we, we can say searches dot map so we're going to say searches map we're going to get search so for each of them let's say we want to render a div and let's make it multi lines so it is easier for us to read and let's give it a class name so we're going to say class name equals to let's say search item like so and here we can simply just print our search so we're going to say search like so save and all our searches have have been rendered here according to the searches array and now we just have to style it and actually i'm also going to give this a class of section so we're going to say section save so now this is in two column that is because section has a display of flex so we have to make it blocks okay so let's go to our index.scss and before we start writing let's cut this out so the code for our footer so we're going to cut it Control x in our partials folder we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it underscore footer dot scss like so and here we can paste what we copied so we're going to paste what we copied and let me just remove this line save close and we're going to import it so we're going to say at import and we're going to import partials forward slash footer dot scss like so and everything still works the same so okay so now we can say our previous searches will have a display a block so display block like so and then we can say the h2 inside that the h2 will have a color of text color and i think we don't need anything else apart from this margin save so this is how this looks like okay now let's style them like so so let's see let's go back so this one has a class of previous searches container so let me copy this Control c and we can paste it dot v like so and then all our all of our search item have a class of search item so let's copy this Control c and paste it Control v so first of all they will have a background color background color of our primary color so we're going to say var dash dash primary color like so this is how they look like and they will have a display of inline block so we're going to say inline dash block so inline dash block like so and we want some padding so we're going to say padding of let's try 0.5 em and let's also add some margin so we're going to say margin of let's say we want the margin top to be zero the margin right to be let's say 0.5 em the margin bottom will be 0.5 em and the margin left will also be zero save and this is how they look like let's see and pretty similar i think for the left right padding let's increase it so we're going to say left right can be 1 em like so the color will be white so we're going to say hashtag fff like so and the border radius so let's say border radius of let's try 30 pixel okay this should be border radius not border so we're going to say border dash radius of 30 pixel save and now we have this rounded border Okay, I think we need to increase our spacing so let's try 0.75 instead of just 0.5 and I think it should be 1 so we're going to say full 1 em and and 1 em and yeah I think this is pretty close to what we have and now we also want some box shadow so we're going to say box shadow so let's say the x will be 0 the y will be 3 pixel the blur will be 6 pixel and the color will be our shadow color save and now we have the shadow okay in our finished project if i were to refresh you'll see one item comes after another so they also need some animation but before that we need to reduce some margin between our h2 and this so in our h2 we are going to say the margin bottom will be let's try 0 0.5 and 0.5 is better so let's give them an animation so we're going to say animation and the animation let's see in our partials folder we have this animations.scss inside that we have this slide in right so we can use this slide in right here so let's go to index.scss so we're going to say the animation duration will be get animation duration let's say 0.5 second and the name will be our slide in right save it and now they comes from the right side but we want one to come after another one so for that we need some animation delay so again we could have used just a for loop here and then get the animation delay but instead of that 
I'm going to add the animation delay in our JavaScript because that way it, it doesn't matter how many search items we have the animation delay will be added accordingly because we are already using a loop here so this map here is a loop so we are also going to say style also we have to use double setup curly brace and here we want to set the animation delay okay so for the animation delay we also need to get our index so here we are also going to get index so we are getting the search and we also want to get the index okay i think we forgot to add a key here so let's say the key will be index so our div will have a key and the key will be index and again we can use this index for our animation delay so we can simply say index times let's try point two and plus we want an s for second save let's click on refresh and this is working but initially we want them to be hidden so let's go to our animation so here so initially we want the transform to be this and the opacity to also be zero so we can just copy this Control c let's go to our index.scss and here we can paste it let me fix the indentation and so now our animation fill mode have to be forward so we simply have to say forward save let's try to click on refresh and now one comes up to another let's try to see here okay let's try to reduce the animation delay so let's go to our recipes page inside that instead of saying point 0.2 let's try point 0.1 save click on refresh and yeah this is pretty similar to what we have in our finished project and now we want to create this search bar so let's create that so after the previous searches we can create a div let's give it a class name of search box okay inside this search box we want a input and we want a button so let's create them so here let's create an input the type will be text and the placeholder will be let's say search like so and after that we also want a button so let's create a button and again this will have a class name of btn so class name equals to btn and inside that we want the search icon so for that we are going to use font awesome so let's import font awesome and our icon so we are going to say import and we want to import font awesome so we are going to say font awesome icon from at font awesome forward slash react font awesome and after that we also want to import our search icon so we are going to say import and we want to import fs search so s e a r c h search from front awesome forward slash free solid svg icons and so inside this button we can use our font awesome so you can say font awesome and our icon will be our search icon save and here you can see we have this button we have this search bar but they look very ugly so let's style them okay so let's copy this class so it is search box control c and let's go to our index.scss so we can let's say we can paste it here Let's say this will have a display of flex. We can say display is going to be flex, and then we can also say align items to center. So align items center save, and this is how this looks like. And let me give it a background color just so that we can see it for now. So background color of let's say red. So this is how much height it has. So let's say this will have a fixed height. So let's say height equals to let's try 40 pixel for now, and then let's target the input and the button inside that so let's say they will have a height of 100% so let's say height of 40 pixel and this is how they look like let's see okay we need to reduce the height let's try 30 and let's see okay let's make it 35 so I think 35 should be pretty close to what we have in our finished project and yeah 35 should be good enough let me just remove the background color of red and then we can also say justify content so justify content we can say end so now the input and the button is in the right side so now let's target the input separately so we're going to say input and our input will have a border so let me just copy the border from here so i'm going to click on inspect and this is the border so i can copy this actually let's just copy all of them and then i'll explain it to you so let me just copy all four all these lines Control c and you can paste it Control v and let me fix the indentation 
save and this is how this look like so our input will have a mean width of 250 pixel and for the padding the top bottom will be 0 and left right will be 0.5 em and for the border radius this side will be 5 pixel this side will be 5 pixel and this two side will be 0 0 and our outline will be none so we won't have any outline when we focus on this and the border will be 1 pixel solid and this color so let's copy that style for our button as well so we can click on inspect so we only have like two lines of code so let me just copy this control c and here we can now target our button dot btn and paste them control v save and actually we don't need this margin we can simply say padding and the padding actually we let's say padding dash block and the padding block will be zero like so and the padding inline so let's target padding dash inline it should be just in line and the padding in line can be let's say 0.25 em okay this is not enough so let's say 0.5 em or 0.75 let's see and i think 0.75 is pretty close i think this should be all for this section here and yeah i'll stop this video here in the next video we're going to create this section here this recipe card and this grid here so i'll see you in the next video Okay guys, in this video we want to create our recipes card and this grid here. But before that, in our terminal we again have some errors. So we have some CSS related error. It is telling us we should use flex end instead of just end. So here let's just try to find where we are using end. So let me just control F and type end. And, each. and here instead of saying end, we have to say flex end. So flex dash end like so save. And now the warning is gone but everything else is working the same so as you can see nothing else have been changed and another thing i want to do is go to our recipes here so uh, what i want to do is cut all of this so control x and i want to create a separate component for this so i'm going to control x and inside our components folder i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it previous searches dot js and here we're going to say export default function the name will be previous searches so previous searches like so and then here we are going to return the html we just copied so control v and we can fix the indentation like so but we have to import the font awesome in that component not here so control x and we are going to import them here so let me paste them here like so and save and in our recipes we are simply going to say import and when you import previous searches so previous searches from components forward slash previous searches like so so we can use it here so here we're simply going to have to say previous searches like so save and it looks like we have some error okay our searches also have to be in that component so control x and let's say we are going to paste it here control v save and everything was the same so now we can start working on our recipes card finally so here so let's create a div here so we're going to create a div and let's give it a class name so we're going to say class name equals to let's say recipes container so inside the container we're going to have a recipe card so for the card again we're going to create a separate component so let me just close this close this for now so we don't need them so we can close them for now okay so now let's go to components create a new file and let's call it recipe card dot js like so and here we can again say export default function so export default function and the name will be recipe card Let's say return and we're going to return a div the class name will be recipe card like so let's close the div so for slash div for now let's say hello like so let's go to our recipes.js and import our recipe card so let's say import recipe card from components for slash recipe card and let's try to use it so let's say for recipe card like so save 
and here we have this card here so let's copy it a few more times so one two three four five six for now save and here are they so let me just copy this so recipes container and we want to create a responsive grid like so as you can see this one is responsive grid the number of card changes depending on the screen size so for that we are going to give our recipe container a display of grid and we are going to use the min max function so we are going to say dot recipes container okay but before that just like always we want to clear them so let's cut this in the partials we are going to create a new file let's call it let's say previous searches dot scss paste it like so and let me just delete the first line like so save close and then import it so we're going to set import and when to import partials for slash previous searches like so save let's click on refresh to see if everything is still working so yeah it looks like everything is still working so now our recipes container can have a display of grid actually before that in our recipe card so let me just copy this recipe card control c go here paste it so let's paste it here control v let's just give it a background color of red so we can see it better so we're going to say background color of red like so so now they have this red color okay so recipes container will have a display of grid so we can say display grid like so now this on its own won't do anything so we are going to say grid template column so grid template column we are going to say repeat and again we are going to use the auto fit function and then we are going to use the min max and let's say the minimum width will be 220 pixel and the maximum width will be one half so if you were to save it actually let's give it a gap also so we are going to say grid gap and the gap can be let's say 1.5 bm like so so now we have this gap let's click on refresh and right now we have this two column layout but if we were to change make our screen bigger as you can see now we have this three column and if our screen is very small then we have this one column layout so it is fully responsive okay so now we can start creating this card here so for the card first thing we are going to need is this image here so for the image if you remember we have created a custom image component so this is the custom image component that we created in our previous video we are going to use this component here so our component just need a image source and a padding top so as props so let's use them so in our recipe card here we are going to say import and when to import custom image so we are going to say custom image from dot for slash custom image and let's try to use it so we are going to say custom image like so and it needs the image source and it needs the padding top so let me just delete this we don't need this source here so for the image source for now let's just use the image from this public folder so public image gallery so we're going to say forward slash img forward slash gallery forward slash let's say img underscore one dot jpg save and let's see if it's working so here are the, this is working so let's say this will have a padding top of 65 pixel 65 percent sorry so this will be the ratio like so and this is how they look like okay so our recipe card needs some border radius so let's do that so let's go to our index.scsl let's go to our recipe card let me delete the background first we don't need it so we're going to say border radius and the border radius can be let's say 10 pixel like so and still the images are not rounded so we are also going to have to say overflow to hidden so we are going to say overflow hidden like so so now they are like so let's see if 10 pixel is too much actually yeah we should use 5 pixel so 5 and this is much better we also need some box shadow so we are going to say box shadow so the box shadow can be let's say 0 for the x axis 5 pixel for the y axis 10 10 pixel for the blur and the color can be our shadow colors save and now we have the shadow let's try 15 i think it should be good enough okay so after the custom image we are going to have another div so let's create a div let's give it a class name of recipe card info let's close the div so for slash div like so and let's see what we need to have inside that so first we are going to have an image so let's have an image here so we are going to have img and the source 
and the source will be let's say img for slash and then we're going to say top shapes so we're going to get an image from our top shape which is this folder here so we're going to say top shapes and then we can simply say img underscore one so img underscore one dot jpg save and now we have these images but they are way too big so when we need to style them so so let's give our image a class so we're going to say class name equals to let's say author dash image img for image so let me copy this control c let's go to our index.scss and here we can paste it control v and let's say this one will have a height of let's say 100 pixel so 100 pixel and the width will also be 100 pixel and we don't need the object fit cover we have globally set it so save and this is how much this is so this is way too big so we need to make it smaller so let's see so let's try 60 let's see if 60 is closer and i think 60 would be good okay before that let's go to our recipe let's go to our recipe card and let's target this so recipe card info control c let's go here and we're going to paste it here so dot control v and this needs some padding so we're going to say padding of let's say let's try 15 pixel so 15 pixel like so and let's see and i think 15 pixel should be good for now we can change it later if needed so our image will have a border radius of 50 percent so it will be a circle we're also going to add some borders so we're going to say border of and again we can copy this copy the borders from here so we're going to click on inspect and this is the border so this is the border color so we can copy this control c actually let's copy this box shadow also we need both of them so save control c and we can paste it here control v fix the indentation like so save and this is how they look like so we want our image to be let's say half on this image so how we can do that so for that we are simply going to use some negative margin so we're going to use a margin top so if we were to say negative 10 pixel you'll notice if i save it it goes up just a little so if i make it 10 it goes up a little so we have to play with this value until the image overlaps on this image so let's try 50 negative 50 and before we do anything let's say our image will have a z index so let's say z index of 2 and our image so we're going to have a custom image inside this recipe info so let's target that so we're going to say dot custom image so custom image is basically this image so this will have a z index so z dash index of negative 1 so now the image here is overlapping over this image like so and this is looking pretty good so after that we'll have this paragraph with with the text so let me just copy this control c let's go to our recipe card so after the image we're going to have a paragraph text paste it and let's give the class name and the class name can be let's say recipe dash title once again let's just copy the class so control c and we're going to go to our index.scss and let's just paste it here so dot control v recipe title let's give it a font size of let's see 1.25 bm is good enough or not let me close this click on refresh okay we have to save this so control s so this is how much it is so and i think 1.25 bm is pretty close okay so let's go to our index.scss and we're also going to have to say this one will have a color and the color will be our text color so we're going to say var and we're going to say dash dash text dash color save it and this looks the same let's also try to add a little bit of margin on the top so we're going to say margin top of let's try 0.25 bm and i think 0.25 bm is good so after that we'll have a little bit of description here so recipe description so let's go to our recipe card so here again we're going to have another paragraph text Let's give it a class name of recipe. That's D E S C disk for description. So let's copy this text here. So control C and paste it. Control V. And let's copy the class. Let's go to our index.scss. And let's paste it. So dot control V. 
so first of all this one have a this one will have a color of var dash dash text dash light so dash dash text dash light like so and let's try to reduce the font size actually let's see yeah let's try to make reduce the font size so we're going to say font size of 0.9 em so just a bit smaller and we also want a letter spacing so we're going to say letter spacing to let's say one pixel and finally we'll have this view recipe button so let's create that so after the paragraph text so i'm simply going to use a simple a text so you could use a button or whatever you want so i'm i'm just using an a text so it will be hashtag exclamation mark so a dummy dummy link basically so it will save view recipe like so save and here it is so let's style it so let's give it a class name so the class name can be let's say view dash button like so let's copy this control c go to index.scss and here we are going to paste it so control v and then we are also going to say the view button will have a font size of let's try 1.5 em so 1.5 em and no 1.5 is em is way too much so let's say 1.25 em let's just keep one em and we're going to say the font weight will be bold the color will be our primary color and it will have some margin on the top so we're going to say margin top of 0.5 em and in order for this to work we are going to have to say display of inline block so now we have this margin so let's try to increase it to the 0.75 and yeah, I think this is looking pretty similar to what we have in our finished project. Okay, now all of our card have the same info, but we don't want that. So we're going to pass these infos as props. So in our recipes, we're going to create an array. Let me just paste the array. I already have to save your time. Okay, so I have pasted the code. So here we simply have an array with some objects. So each of our object has a title, an image, which is simply an image from our top shapes folder. And then an author image, which is an image from here. After that, so and we have a lot of objects here some some are duplicates and after that at the end you'll see we have this line of code so this is simply shuffling our array so for example this object can be here this object can be here so randomizing the array basically you can just delete this line if you want it so i am just keeping it to shuffle our array so now instead of having this many recipe card let me just comment this out and here we're simply going to say our recipes dot map so for each of them we're going to get a recipe and our index and here we're going to return our recipe card and here we're going to say key will be our index and then we want to pass recipe as a prop so we're going to say recipe equals to recipe like so so let me just copy this Control c and if we were to save it and now the number of cards correspond to the number of elements in this array so let me just go to our card recipe card and here we're going to now receive our recipe as a prop so Control v recipe so now instead of saying the image source like so we're going to say recipe dot img i think this is what it called actually let's go to our recipes dot scss okay it is called image not img so i m a g e like so and then instead of saying this we're going to say recipe dot let's see what we called it author image so copy this and here we are simply going to say recipe dot author image and finally we have recipe dot title so let's cut this and here we are going to say recipe dot title and now everything has different values and if i were to refresh as you can see now this one is pizza if i refresh now this one is separate so they are being randomized so that is what the last line here so here this sort function is doing randomizing our array okay let's try to resize our screen let's see if everything is responsive or not so yeah it looks like everything is responsive and good so that's all for this video in the next video we're going to start creating the interesting part which is the settings page we'll first create this layout and then make everything functional so if we click on this the theme should change to dark if we click on this the primary color should change we can make the font size smaller larger animation slow fast etc so i'll see you in the next video
okay guys our project is coming together real nice we have completed the home page we have also completed the recipes page so now the only thing left is the settings page so in this video let's create this settings page so it we want the settings page to look like this so in this video we are going to first design this page so we'll make this layout and in the next video we're going to make everything work so if i click on this the dark theme should appear if i click on this the light theme should appear and we should also be able to change the color the font size etc okay so let's start but before that i have noticed one thing is this is still just a regular link not a router link so if i click on this nothing happens so let's change it to a router link so i'm going to go to our navbar and here instead of just a tag we're going to use the link tag so we're going to say link and the link is a custom component from the react router we have imported it here so here we're going to say link and we also need a two property so we're going to say two two will be simply the forward slash so the home page and the closing tag also needs to be link like so save and now if you click on this we go back to the home page okay great now let's start building the layout so for that let's go to our settings page let me close this navbar we don't need it anymore so here first we are going to have a div and i'm going to give it a class name of section so class name equals to section inside that we are going to have a h2 and let me just copy the text and then we are going to have another div and this div will be this container here so let me give it a class name of options container so class name equals to options dash container and for now we can simply say hello like so save and this is how this looks like okay so our section have a display of flex so our sections will also have a class of let's say d dash block this d dash block will make the display to block so in the index.scss first we're going to cut all of this so we're going to cut all this these are for our recipes page so let me just control x cut this in our partials we're going to create a new file let's call it underscore recipes section dot scss and we can paste it control v control s close it and then we can import it so we're going to set import and we're going to import partials forward slash recipes section save and let's go to our recipes page okay everything still works the same so it's working okay now let's target our d dash block so in the section we're going to say the section with the class of d dash block they will have a display of block so we can simply say display and the display will be block okay this should be n dot d dash block not just d dash block so we want section with the class of d dash block not the d dash block inside the section save and now they are in two rows so that is because section has a display of block and not flex okay let's target the options container now so we are going to target the options container let's go back to our index.scss let's scroll down and let's say when to start writing here so let's say dot options container so the options container is this div. so first of all this will have some box shadow so we're going to say box dash shadow and let's say 0 for the x-axis 5 pixel for the y-axis and 10 pixel for the blur and the color can be our shadow color like so and we also want some padding so we're going to say padding of let's try 1 em we also need some border radius so we're going to say border radius and the border radius can be let's say 5 pixel and we'll also have the primary color in our right border so we're going to say border actually left sorry so we're going to say border left and let's say we want 0.5 em solid and our primary color so we're going to say bar dash dash primary color let me close the sidebar like so and let me also give it a background color so we're going to say background color and the background color will be our background color so we're going to say var and when dash dash background color like so save and this is how this looks like so far let's also give it a margin top so we're going to say margin top and the margin top can be let's say 0.5 em let's see how that looks actually let's try 1 em And yeah, I think 1 em is better. Okay, let's also choose the h2 inside that. So we're going to target the h2 inside the d dash block. So let me just copy this. 
and let's say we are going to target it here so d dash block and the h2 inside that let's say this will have a font size of 1.5 em let's see how that looks um let's try 2 em and let's see okay 2 em is too much let's try 1.75 and yeah 1.75 should be pretty close okay now inside this container we are going to have this options so we are going to create those so let's say we are going to have a div with a class of option and we are going to give this div a class name of option like so and inside the option we are going to have a checkbox so let's say we are going to have a div with a class of checkbox actually not checkbox let's just say check this is not a box circle rather and let's close it so for slash div like so so here we are going to have the check icon from font awesome so we're going to first import font awesome so we're going to say import we're going to import font awesome font awesome icon from react font awesome icon like so and then we're going to import the check icon so we're going to say import and we're going to import fa check from at font awesome for slash free solid svg icon like so so here now we can use the fa check icon like so we're simply going to have to use the font awesome component and for the icon we can pass the check icon like so save and here it is so let's now style it okay before that in first container we're going to have two checkbox so let, what i'm going to do is copy this so i'm going to all shift down to copy and the first one can have a class of light let's say light and the second one can have a class of dark like so save okay now let's target the options inside the options container so here inside this we are going to have option and let me just switch to this tab so let's say our options will have a height so we are going to say height of let's try 2 em we are also going to say width to 2 em and let's give it a box shadow again so box shadow and the box shadow can be let's say 0 pixel for the x axis 3 pixel for the y axis 6 pixel for the blur and the color will be shadow color like so okay 2 em is not enough let's try 3 and 3 is a bit better we can change it later if you want but for now let's just say our container will have a display of flex so we're going to say display flex like so and the options can have some margin on the right so we, or rather we can simply use the gap property here so we can say gap and the gap can be let's say 1 em save and now we have this gap let's see they need to be bigger and more white space maybe so let's try 4 and 4 is too much let's try 3.5 let's see if that looks any better yeah 3.5 should be very close to what we have and they will also have some border radius so again this our option will have a border radius the border radius of 10 pixel let's see if 10 pixel is too much yeah let's try 5 pixel like so 5 pixel is very close and let's say they will also have a display of flex so we're going to say display the display will be flex the justify content will be center and align items to be center so justify content center and align items to center so that way the checkbox will be in the center like so okay now let's target option with the class of light so we're going to say and dot light this one will have a background color of white so background color the background color will be let's say hashtag fff and then let's target the end dot dark for this one the background color can be we can copy from here so we're going to click on inspect so right click inspect and this is the color so i'm going to simply copy this Control c and we can paste it here Control v like so save and this is how this looks like okay now let's target the check inside that so i think we have to give it a class of check yeah so let's target the check so we're going to say dot check and for the check let's say the height and width will be let's start with 2.5 em the background color will be our primary color the border radius will be 50 pixel and let's see how this looks so this is how they look like okay they will also have the text align of center so we're going to say text align the text align will be center so this will center the checkbox horizontally and we can also center it vertically by saying line height so we're going to say line height 
the line height needs to be same as the height so 2.5 em and now the checkbox is centered both horizontally and vertically let's increase the font size so we're going to say font size and the font size can be let's say 1.2 em actually let's just target the svg separately so let's say svg and the svg can have a let's say height and width of 1.5 em let's save and this is how they look like and it looks like these properties are not working so instead we are going to just copy these lines so these three lines here control c and you can paste it here control v save and this is better so let me fix the indentation okay it looks like our circle here also have just a little bit of shadow so we are going to add some shadow here also so we are going to say box dash shadow and the box shadow will be let's say 0 pixel for the x axis 2 pixel for the y axis 5 pixel for the blur and the color will be our shadow color like so save and this is how this looks like okay now let's go back to our settings page here we are going to import the use use state here so we are going to say import use state from react and then we are going to say const and then we are going to say theme and we are going to say set theme equals to use state by default our theme will be light so now we are going to use this so let me just copy this control c and now let's say we only want to show the checkbox if if the theme is light here so we are going to say we are going to say theme equal equals to light and in only that case we can show our checkbox so let me just use a parenthesis here like so and we can cut this so control x so let me select this and control x cut and we can paste it here so control v save and this is working okay let's use triple equal sign instead of double equal sign save like so and let's also just copy this so control c and we can paste it here okay let me just fix the indentation again and here we are going to say dark instead of light so we're going to say dark save and now this one have a checkbox but this one doesn't and if we were to say our default theme is dark in that case this one have a checkbox and this one doesn't okay let's switch back so light and just like this let's create all the sections so let me just copy this whole thing so i'm going to copy all of this so all shift down to copy and for this one this will be our primary colors control c and we are going to paste it control v okay now for the primary colors i'm going to have an array so let me just quickly copy the array that i already have to save your time and I'm going to paste it. Let's say we're going to paste it here. So control V. So these are basically just these colors here. So now here instead of just using the div here, we're going to use a loop here. So let me just comment it out for now. So control forward slash to comment. And here we're going to say primary colors dot map. Okay, like so. And for each of them, we're going to get the color and index. And after that, we're going to render this div here. So all this content. So control C and we can paste it. Control V and fix the indentation like so okay so for now let's just say true here so true like so save okay let's see what happened okay we have ex accidentally changed the f first one not the second one so let me just control x here and paste it above like so save so now we have one two three four five of this con elements that is because we have five items in our array which are here so let me just delete this we don't need this anymore and for this div here, we are going to give it a background color. So we are going to say style equals to we are going to say background color. And we have to use double setup curly brace. Inside that, we are going to say background color. And the background color will simply be our color. So color like so save. And now each of them have this different color. And then let's go back above here. So here we are also going to say const so we are going to create another theme so we are going to say const primary color set primary color equals to use state and by default the our primary color will be zero so zero so basically we are just storing the index here instead of the actual color so zero basically means the first color here so here now we are also going to say instead of saying true so now here instead of saying true what we are going to say is if primary color so primary color equal equals to our index only in that case show the checkbox otherwise don't show the checkbox 
So now only this primary color have a checkbox that is why this is the selected color. Okay, so after that we'll have this font size and then animation speed. So for the font size, I'm once again going to copy all of this. So I'm going to copy this, all shift down to copy. If we were to save this, now we have two of them. Okay, now I'm going to also paste an another array. So let me just paste it, then I will explain. So I'm going to paste it, let's say here, control V. So now we have an array of font sizes. So for that, we have one, two, three elements. So which that is because we'll have three different font size, small, medium, and large. So we have three objects in our array. So each object has a title. So for example, small, medium, and large. And they also have a value. So 12 pixel, 16 pixel, and 20 pixel, like so. And then for we are also going to say const and here we are going to say font size set font size equals to use state and here by default our selected font size will be medium so that is where we are saying one so second element from our array okay so now let's scroll, scroll down and here instead of saying primary colors we are going to say font sizes so font sizes dot map for each of them we are going to get a size so we are simply going to say size like so control c Okay, so now here instead of having option div here, we need to have a button. So let me just comment this out. We are going to have a button. Like so, the class name will be button. So class name equals to btn. And for the text, we are simply going to say size dot title. So size dot title. Like so, save. And here we have these three divs. So they will also have a checkbox. So let me make this multi line. So here, let me just copy this. Control C and we can paste it here. Control V, save. And this is how this looks like. Instead of just showing this icon here, let's, let me just do this. So I'm going to say font size equal equals to index. If it is true, only in that case, we are going to show one awesome icon here. So let me just control X and we can paste it here. Control V, like so, save. So now only this medium has this ch checkbox. Okay, let me just wrap this inside a span. So we're going to say span. Let me just cut this. So control X, close it here. So span like so. Okay, now let's target the span inside the button. So we're going to target the button inside this. So we're going to say dot btn and the span inside that. Let's say this will have some margin on the right side. So we're going to say margin right. Up there say 0.5 em like so and this will have a display of inline block inline dash block like so this should be outside our options so let me just bring out bring it out of this options container so like so save and now we have this little bit of white space between our button and our checkbox actually instead of wrapping our text inside this so let me just control x cut this we want our icon to be wrapped in the span that way we won't have white space in every button so let me just create a span here instead so we're going to say span and let me close the span also so we're going to close it so we're going to close it here so we're simply going to say for slash span like so save and then in our index that says instead of margin right we're going to say margin left so now only this icon here have this little bit of margin left. Okay, so now we have some warning. So let's use triple equal sign instead of double equal sign. So here we are going to use triple equal sign. Let's go up here. We are going to use triple equal sign also save. And now it is telling us we are not using this variable. So set theme, set primary color, set font size, etc. Don't worry, you, we will use them in the next video and then the warning will be gone. Okay, finally we are going to do the same for let's see which one we have. So finally we have this animation speed. So let me just delete this. We don't need them. We don't need them. And again, we can just all shift down to copy this. All shift down. Okay, this one still says preferred theme. This should say font size. So let me just copy this. Control C and paste it here. Control V. And then we have animation speed. Control C and paste it here. Control V. Like so. Save. Okay, now finally, let's scroll up. And just like our font size array, we'll also have an array for our animation speed. So let me just paste the array that I have. So our array contains some object. Each object, like previous, contains a title and a value. So again, we're going to say const fonts, const animation speed. So const animation speed set animation speed equals to one because by default, our animation speed will be medium. Like so, save. And then for the, our animation speed here, Instead of size, we're now getting speed. So let me just rename this. So, so I'm going to target all these two here. And here we're simply going to say instead of size, we're going to say speed. Like so. 
okay instead of font sizes here we are also going to have to say animation speeds so animation speeds like so save and now this is animation speeds and instead of font size we are going to say animation speed like so save and this is how this looks like so far and let's see and yeah this should be pretty close to what we have in our finished project so I think that's gonna be it for this video and in the next video we'll see how we can make everything work so if we click this the dark theme should appear if we click this that light theme should appear and we'll sh we should be able to change the colors by click on clicking on these buttons so I'll see you in the next video okay guys so in the previous video we have created this design for our settings page and in this video we're going to make everything work so we should be able to click the button to, to change the settings of our pages like so and i think this will be the last video of this series so if you have come this far i really appreciate your support thanks a lot it would mean the world to me if you could just subscribe to this channel i'll try to keep making this type of video for you so yeah subscribe now if you haven't already and let's continue okay so first of all what i'm going to do is here i'm going to paste another variable so let me just paste it and then i'll explain so i'm going to paste it here so control v so here we are creating another state we are calling it settings and then set settings this function will be used to update the settings so this settings is just containing some variables here so if you go to our index.scss and scroll all the way up you'll see we have these variables here so these variables are simply these variables here so we are simply just representing our css variable as a javascript object so you'll see why we'll need it in a moment but for now i'm going to paste another variable so let me just copy the variable paste it like so and let me fix the indentation like so so here we are going to have another variable so this is called themes and inside this themes array we have two themes so first one is our light theme and second one is our dark theme so in case of the light theme the background color the background light shadow color text color and text light will be same as the variables we already have in the settings array so the background color is white the background light is white the shadow color is some dark color the text color and these are also some dark color and this one is basically some variables for our dark theme so in this case the, our background colors are dark color the shadow color is dark but the text color and the text light is white so these are basically just our light and dark theme so we'll be able to toggle the themes here okay so now we're going to create a function so we're going to say function and the function name will be let's say change theme so we're going to say change theme and what this function will do is take an index as its argument so we're going to say i so this i can be 0 or 1 so 0 will represent light theme and 1 will represent dark theme so first we want to get the theme from our themes array so we're going to say const theme let's just call it underscore theme that is because we already have a theme array i think so somewhere here yeah so we already have a theme variable that is why we are calling it underscore theme so for this one we can simply say equals theme equals to and we can say themes i so we are getting the variable here what we also can do is wrap it inside square bracket and use the spread operator to create new object and not store the reference and after that we are also going to say set theme update our theme we are going to say if i equal equals to zero if i is zero in that case we'll set the theme to light otherwise we'll set the theme to dark after that we are going to update the properties of our settings variables so for example if i were to choose dark theme so in that case which we should be able to update these variables with these new variables here so let's see how we can do that so let's go to our function where is that so this is our function so let's add a comment so we are going to say update settings like so so here we are going to first say let setting we are going to say let settings yeah underscore settings equals to again we're creating a new object from this settings so not the reference here and then we're going to update our settings so we're going to say for let key in underscore settings so if we were to just say console.log so console.log our key let's see what happens so our change theme function let's use it so let's scroll down and here when this option is clicked we're also going to say on click when it is clicked we are going to call our change theme function and we are going to pass 0 for our light theme so 0 like so and let me just copy this so we are going to copy this like so control c and we are going to paste it here also so control v and for this one we are going to say 1 so we, this will toggle the dark theme save and now let's right click click on inspect and let's try to click on this okay we are getting some error let's see what is that okay guys this one should have should be an object and not an array sorry that is because our theme is an object array of objects so this one will 
so for example the theme 0 theme 0 will give us an object and not an array so here we are going to use the curly brace instead of square bracket like so and let's see if it works now save just click on refresh let's try to click on this and then as you can see we get dash dash background color dash dash primary color dash dash text color so basically we are getting this part of our object so this is the key if we wanted to get the value we could simply say theme underscore theme and then we can simply say keys like so to get the value so if you have to save it refresh click on this as you can see this time we only get the value so if you just use the key we'll get the key and if we say underscore theme key in that case we'll get the value so just like that we, we want to update our settings so we're going to say underscore settings so underscore settings key equals to underscore theme key like so and finally after that we are going to say set settings to our updated settings object like so and if we were to save it nothing should happen if we were to just update it but now what we want to do is whenever our settings object change we want to do something so for that we are going to use a use effect here so we are going to say use effect we are also going to import use effect from react so we are going to say use effect like so so after that we can say use effect and what we want to do is we want to run this function whenever our settings changes so we are here inside the dependencies array we are simply going to pass our settings okay so for now let's just say console.log so console.log and let's just say settings updated so let me say settings updated like so save and let's try to click on this as you can see it says settings updated if i click on this it says settings updated okay instead of just saying settings updated what we want to do is update our css variable so for that what we need to do is first we need to have to target our root to target our root we can simply say const root equals should be root equals to document the document element so the document element will be our root and then we're we are going to save for key in our settings so again we're looping through all the properties in our settings we're going to say root dot style dot set property so we're using the set property method to update our css variable and we're simply saying key equals to setting so for example we're saying animation speed equals to one so let's try to save it click on refresh and then let's try to click on here and as you can see now we have this dark theme here let's go to our settings page and if we were to click on this we get this dark theme here okay let's go to our settings and let's scroll down so we're going to scroll all the way down to our options container so the background color for this one let's just say the background color will be background light like so save and this is how this looks like and let's target our body so we're going to scroll up here we're going to target our body let's say our body will also have a background color of our background color like so save it should be background light sorry so background light save and so this is how this look like okay let's see if anything is wrong here let's go to our use effect so here let's just try to console log our settings so we're going to say console log so console.log settings save let's let me click on inspect let me click on refresh and let me just click on this here so we have this background color this primary color so for some reason our primary color is becoming undefined let's see why it is becoming undefined okay in our loop here so inside this change theme function inside this loop instead of saying underscore setting we are going to say underscore theme we want to loop over the properties of theme not the setting so let me try to save it click on refresh let's click on this and now this is how this look like okay let's let's go to our settings so let's scroll down and we are going to scroll down here so this one here we are going to say color equals to our font our text color so we are going to say var dash dash text color so dash dash text dash color save and this is how this look like so let's see yeah so this is now working fine so if you click on this now we have this light theme if you click on this now we get this dark theme so this is working delete this we don't want this okay so just like this we are going to have a function to update our preferred colors okay again we have changed we need to change this to theme and this to color we have swap the text so let's go down here it will say preferred theme and scroll down and this will say preferred color instead okay so now it, it is saying the right thing 
Okay, so just like the change theme, let's create a change color function. So we're going to say function change color. Change color will change your primary color. Again, it will take an index. So our primary colors array, let's see where is that. So our primary colors is just a regular array, array of just strings. So this, this one should be much more simpler. We're going to say const. So here we're going to say const color. Actually, let's call it underscore color. And the color will be our simply our colors. So we're going to say color equals to primary colors. And we're going to get the ith color. So the color at that index. And then we're going to say underscore setting equal to the settings. And then we're going to say settings primary color equals to the underscore color. And then finally we can say set settings equals to the new settings. Save. Okay, now we just need to use this function. So let me just copy this. Let's scroll down. Scroll down to preferred color. And here we're going to use the on click. So we're going to say on click. And when it is click, we're going to run this function. So we're going to run our change color function. And here we're going to pass our index. Let's see if we are getting the index or not. So yeah, if we are getting the index here, so we can just pass the index, save. Let's click here. Now our theme has been changed to this. If we are to click on this, the theme has been changed to this. But it looks like this, this checkbox here is not updating. Let's see why is that. So, okay, let's go to our function above here we also need to update our primary color so we're going to say set primary color so set i think we call it primary color equals to i like so save we can say just equal to one this is a function so we are going to pass i instead like so save if we click on this we get this blue color if we click on this we get this yellow color we can change our theme and everything is working okay let's remove this console log let's see where is the console log so this is the console log. Let me just delete this. We don't need it. So let's create the function for font size. So we're going to create a function for change font size. So we're going to say function change font size. Again, it will take i. It will going to say if size equals to font sizes. It will get the i size from the font sizes variable. Then we're again doing the same thing here. So simply updating the font size variable to i. And rest is same as above. So let's just save it. And let me just copy this control C. And let's scroll down and here is our font size so in the button we're going to say on click we're going to run this function we're going to call the change font size and we're going to pass the index save let's try to click on this okay it looks like it is not working let's see why is that okay the size here is an object that is because our font size variable is an object not a simple string so here instead of saying size we're going to say size dot value like so save let's try to refresh let's click on this and now we have this bigger font size if you click on this we get medium font size if we click on this we get very small font size and finally we just have to create a function to change our animation speed so we're going to say change animation speed and again we're simply going to say underscore speed equals to our animation speeds i then we're going to say settings equals to dot 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 settings we are going to change the animation speed of settings to a sp underscore speed dot value and then we are going to say set animation speed to i and finally settings to underscore settings so now let's use this control c let's go down all the way down to here again we are going to say on click here we are going to say and here we are going to pa call our change animation speed function and we need to pass our index save Okay, so if I were to now click here, so this is how they come. Now let me close this. Let's change the animation speed to fast. And now they comes faster. If I were to cl click on slow, let's click go here. And uh, as you can see, now the animation speed is very slow. So everything is working. Our settings page is working just fine. And let's just try to change the theme to dark. Let's just click here. Let's go to our home page. And everything is looking fine in our home page. I think we just need a little bit of border top on our card here. So let's see how we can do that. So let's just go to our index.scss. Actually, let me just open up my sidebar back. And to change this, we are going to have to go to our top shape section. So this shape section here. We're going to have this info here. Let's add just a bit of padding top. So we're going to say PT for padding top of let's just say 0.5 EM save. And I think this is looking much better. 
let's go to our recipes page and this is how they look like so let's go here let's go to recipes page and this is how they look like and here this is how they look like let's go to our settings and if I now go to the settings one thing you'll notice is everything has been changed back that is because we're not storing our settings so what you can do is use local storage to store your settings and that way if you refresh the page or come back to settings page from another page your settings won't be lost but you can do this on your own i won't show this in, in this video otherwise our series has now been completed everything is now working our project is working as expected it is also fully responsive so that's all for this video series i hope you enjoyed this and learned something new if so once again i'm asking you to subscribe that would mean the world to me i'll try to keep making this type of video for you so yeah like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next series